Let's do it. New game? We're going. Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of the Old Clock. To start, choose junior or senior detective. We're gonna if do you junior. New adventure games or need the year, 1930. The place, the road to Titusville, where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend, Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her. Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? 
the spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily isn't all that awaits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. Oh, that's a really good line. Nancy Drew is about to get a taste of her intrigue, mystery. Oh, that was good. Okay, so I think the audio should be pretty good from here on out, unless it's a cutscene. We'll see. All right. Drop a nickel into the slot, please. There we go. Now, how may I be of service? Okay, I'd like to call Carson Drew. I'd like to talk to Carson Drew. His number is KL57187. Hang on a minute. Carson Drew speaking. Hi, Dad. Well, I see you got to Titusville okay. The car ran like a top. The car ran like a top. It ought to. That's a fine car. You treat it well, it'll treat you well. Listen, as it turns out, I just called there and left a message for you to call me. You did? I need to get some documents from a colleague over there. I thought since you were in the area, you could pick them up, save him paying postage. Sure. What's the address? He said he'd just leave them for you at the telegraph office. Just drive into town and look for tubby telegrams. He said you can't miss it. Will do. These papers are extremely important, Nancy. <laughs> I will pick them up, Dad. Good. Remember, watch your gas gauge and get gas when you're low so you don't run out. And try to avoid potholes. The more you hit, the likely it is you'll wind up with a flat. Yes, Dad. And if you do get a flat, take it off and put on your spare. Lecture time. We're getting lectured. And get it fixed. Yes, Dad. All right, lecture over. Have you found out why Miss Crandall asked you to visit? I wanted to call you first. You've done your daughterly duty. Now go see Emily. And after that... I know, I know. Pick up those documents. That's my girl. Goodbye, Dad. Take care. Oh my goodness, Mackenzie. Thank you so much for the cheers. You were so kind. Thank you. Okay, so when you guys play this game, do you actually call Dad first? Or do you just you run right into the mystery? I always have this thing where I'm like, I gotta call him. Well, hello. I'll bet my bloomers you're Nancy Drew. That's right. Are you Emily's guardian? You got it. I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Mmm, it smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the lilac in specialty. Mm, we get orders for some from pie. all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Coin I already phone. talked to him, but thanks for the message. <laughs> Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. She didn't? Don't get me wrong. She can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. Maybe she's just, you know, still thinking about her mom. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Glory and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. It was nice of you to say yes. I couldn't say no. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. Help her do what? Help her do what? She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb door like me. <laughs> Wait, go on up. She's I in think... Room. Just I th make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. Let me check. I think that's actually in our strategy guide. Yeah, so a dumb Dora is an idiot or dumb person, and a bear cat is an aggressive or feisty person, according to our strategy guide. <laughs> So everyone's got different things. Some people go inside first. Some people call him first. I know. I don't know. It just... I think it just depends, I think, on how I'm playing it. <laughs> Titusville Tattler. Hobo sign language is becoming widespread. Ninth planet discovered named Pluto. <gasps> Uh. Hmm. 
As the number of homeless men drifting from town to town looking for handouts increases with hard times, so does the use of the peculiar signs and symbols they have developed to communicate with each other. To see these hobo symbols in action, you may well need to look no further than your own backyard. For example, is there a circle with an arrow coming out the side drawn in chalk or coal on a nearby sidewalk? It means that a hobo is telling his fellow vagrants to go this way. If the arrow is drawn through the circle, then he's telling fellow vagrants to not go this way. Is there a circle with an X in the middle on your fence? Then expect visitors because it indicates that this is a good place for a handout. A plain, empty circle might be more to your liking, for it means nothing here. What follows are some of the most common symbols and their meanings, so the next time you see one on a fence, wall, or railroad trestle, you'll be in the know. I know, Maggie. For whatever reason, this game, I, when I was thinking about it, when I was like going to start streaming it, I was like, this is a really quotable game. Like, I just remember a lot of quotes from this game. Liv said I do mini golf first. Oh, that's so chaotic, Liv. You go straight to the mini golf. <laughs> Last time I played, I went to mini golf first to get that over with. Oh, well, I understand, yeah. Sometimes the mini golf can be... Oh. Can be a struggle. Okay, clever Hans. What he taught his master and us. So, late last century, a retired teacher named Wilhelm von Austen set out to prove that animals are far more intelligent than commonly believed, and that they are perfectly capable of adding, subtracting, even telling time, provided they receive the proper education. He bought a horse called Hans and proceeded to teach him arithmetic, as if it were a schoolboy, using carrots instead of a hickory stick to elicit the desired responses. Amazingly, within two years, Hans was able to give the answers to mathematical problems by pawing the ground. More amazingly, the horse was almost never wrong. Von Austin was convinced that he had indeed taught his horse arithmetic, and for years it seemed to everyone who saw clever Hans in action that Von Austin was right. Of particular interest to the scientific community was the fact that the horse was able to give the correct answer even when Von Austin was not present, which ruled out the possibility that his master was perpetuating a hoax by giving him subtle hand or voice signals. But finally, a scientist named Oscar... Oscar? Observed that Hans gave the correct... Oscar and Hans? Yes, this article has a... That's what I was... Yes! Those are the two new name, two characters, right, that are coming in our new game? What? That is, he pawed the ground the correct number of times. Only when someone whom the horse could see knew the answer to, to the problem that had been posed. This meant that the horse was indeed reacting to visual cues. Eventually, Oscar proved that Hans's cleverness lay not in his math skills, but in his uncanny ability to perceive tiny, involuntary body movements. When the pawing horse reached the correct answer, the people around him would react, albeit unconsciously. A slight nod of the head, a relaxing of the shoulders, a straightening of the back, all were cues which to Hans meant that it was time to stop pawing and enjoy the carrot that was sure to be forthcoming. That is so fascinating. You guys think this is a true thing? I think I've read, like, when I took a psychology course in university, there was something very similar that a psychologist did with an animal, just like this. Von Austin, who all along had unwittingly been providing his wonder horse with the correct answers, died five years later, far too disillusioned and humiliated to appreciate the invaluable lesson that his misadventure in equine education had inadvertently taught the rest of us. Thanks to Hans, we now know that what people do without being aware that they are doing it can often speak volumes, and thanks to his master, we know that if a man wants to believe that something is true badly enough, he'll often unconsciously find a way to make it true. But like Hans, the more observant we are, the more likely it is we'll pick up on the cues that the believer is inadvertently providing us with, cues that will ultimately allow us, like Oscar, to discern fact from fancy. That was so stinking interesting. Oh my gosh, Liv. Liv, cheering a hundred? Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so, so sweet. Tori said, I freaked out about this in my stories when I replayed this game a few weeks ago. No, I had no idea that it had Hans and Oscar. Coincidence? I don't know, I don't know. 
Oh, yeah. Bounce some bards. Oh, bard bounce. Okay. All right. So, because I don't want to, I don't want to put any more nickels in here. So I'm gonna. We're gonna have to do this like oh, it has to be done in one one take, one take. <laughs> so if we do the yellow here, we can put the green over here, and that can go down. And I think the blue, since it's over here, you can end up just, yeah. So we need the green. No, red first. Okay, I think. So if red goes first, stick the blue down, go to the green. The yellow. <gasps> Was that it? Yeah, we did it. <laughs> Keen. So if you guys watch the pre-stream, you'll know that Keen. It's a play on Carolyn Keen. Was the the writer for the Nancy Drew books, or I should say, the name that was used to write the Nancy Drew books. Shannon, hey, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Hey, just heard the news. Congrats, Carter. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Coincidence or inspiration? Ah, yes, inspiration. Thank you. That's what I meant. <laughs> Maggie said, Liv is the biggest cheerleader. Yes, she is. She surely is. Okay. So, the clock. We could knock this out too. Bird from one side to the other. So if we get that down, move that over. So we just we need to get this. Maggie, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate it. So good to have you along for the ride. Oh, they can go up. Oh, perfect. mirrors doing in here oh my gosh Dory <laughs> thank you so much for the six months I appreciate it thank you I just like I don't even know what to do thank you guys and a hype train what what's a hype train what does that do <laughs> Oh, yeah, I thought there was a clock. Yeah. Oh, but we can't see it right now. All right, my friends. Let's go see Emily. Oh, my gosh. Tori. I've been waiting for a very long time to be able to do something to support you. Huzzah. Ah, my friend. Thank you so much. I truly thank you so much. I appreciate it. Nancy, hi. Welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when Mom died. It meant a lot to me. Mmm, so sweet. See, this was probably the most appropriate time that Nancy reacted to someone else's mother also passing. <laughs> well, I lost my mom too years ago. She I didn't really do that. You and I may very well in other games. <laughs> But you're still one of the nicest people I know. Oh my gosh, Mackenzie. Mackenzie, thank you so much for the six months. Uh, Tori said, been here from the beginning and then loving the journey. Thank you. Thank you guys. Oh my gosh, I don't even... Uh, Maybe overwhelmed and emotional, but in the best way. Thank you guys. Uh, Yeah. Well, thank you. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor. A big favor. You and your dad. My dad? My dad? Helen says he's a lawyer. Shh! What's wrong? I thought I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? You need to put something in a safe? 
See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What about your guardian? What about your guardian? Can't she take care of it? Oh, I don't want her to know I'm doing this, so don't tell her, all right? See, strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. <laughs> what? I what forgot that? about that. Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Oh. Come on, we better get out of here! This is horrible, just horrible. The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. Not the, the kitchen. Had to shut down for months. Not the Maybe pies. For good. Oh, man. Bummer. Will insurance cover the damage? I asked the fire chief the same thing. He said there could be a problem. What kind of problem? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark and boom. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky. And that's when times are good. Oh, wait. That's another one of our words. Hinky. Which means something wrong or out of whack, possibly suspicious. Hinky. Where did Emily go? She was right here. Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, she's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset, but it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire. So now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, no! What am I supposed Emily? to... I can't... Ah. My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Someone must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. You, you, I'm sorry. I was, I wanted to say something, but I just, oh my, you guys. You guys. Oh my word. I don't, you know, I don't know what to say. I'm speed rules right now. I don't know what to say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Mackenzie, for the cheers and Liv and Mackenzie both for gifting subs. Oh my gosh, you guys are so kind. And you have to shampoo? How are you how are you doing this? <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Mm, what do I say? You mean, this sort of thing has happened before? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, I'd rather not say. But I will say this. I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn... I wish Mom were still here. I wish Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who's Josiah Crowley? He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. Oh, oh my gosh, Tori. Tori, thank you for, oh my gosh, gifting five subs. Oh my gosh, you guys, oh my word.
What do I say? Thank you. Also, hey, Goobin Jetpack, what's up? It's so good to see you. No, oh, you guys are the best. No. <laughs> I'm... I don't know if... I, you know what? I've never told you guys before. So, if you've ever seen my face look really, like, flushed, I have uh, rosacea, so my cheeks are always red. But when I get, like, overwhelmed with emotion, they get extra red and hot. So I just want you to know, that is what's happening right now. <laughs> I just... My gosh, thanks for the cheers! Thank you. Maybe he didn't leave you anything because he didn't have anything. Oh, he didn't act like it, but he was rich. His estate was worth almost a quarter of a million dollars. Everything went mm. to Richard Topham. He's this man who claims to be able to help people develop their paranormal powers. How did Josiah Crowley know him? Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him, and he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that, and then leave us nothing, it just wasn't like him. Hmm. Where is Richard Topham now? He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. Was your mother's jewelry insured? Was your mother's jewelry insured? Gosh, I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer, I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. You don't sound very happy about it. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe mm. you could go talk to him. Please? It would be such a big help. I guess. He runs the Main Street Bank. You can't miss it. I'll call him and tell him you're coming. How many people knew you kept your mother's jewelry in here? No one. Well, Jane, my guardian, she knew, but I didn't tell anyone else. Is the clock in the parlor the one Josiah gave you? Yes. I don't know why he gave it to us. It's never worked, and nobody can open it to find out why. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Oh my goodness, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the subscription, Shannon. It's so appreciated. Um, you streamers gotta learn to just accept the love from us because we have a lot of love to give. Well, thank you guys. I, yeah, thank you. I feel so loved. I don't know what to say. You've rendered me speechless. <laughs> Gloria, read this, and pretty soon this fellow will be your favorite poet, too. Oh, yeah, this is the poet Omar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Is this the record with Curse of Blackmore Manor? Yeah. So bright, looks towards heaven at midnight on the longest night each year. It's great. I'm so happy that they included that. Shannon said, I don't know how any of this works, but I'm just here for the fun. Yeah, hey, look, we're in the same boat because I have no clue either <laughs> a quarter of a million dollars is a lot of money even today so back then so much money very true and it's really cool going back in this game and seeing what things were like costing you know so the fact that it's like things are costing a nickel or 25 cents i just oh got it looks like someone recently had a key appraised mm, we'll have to check that out Like, I just can't imagine. Like, I don't know how much gas costs where you guys are at. But over here, it's like $3.20 right now. Somewhere around in there. So to see them getting gas for just coins is... Blows my mind. Over here, Miss Drew. 
Find oh. the toy mouse and give it to Yuri, would you please? Otherwise, he'll just keep meowing. He hates strangers. Ah, it's like four dollars where you're at. Ah, no. It's getting, it's climbing up there. Wait, where's the toy mouse at? There it is. Here you go. Do do. You don't pay me. You don't pay me. I love seeing all YouTube people over on Twitch. It's a fun place. Yes, this is really fun. I'm still trying to learn it, uh, Goobin Jetpack, because it's over. It's like a lot, you know, but slowly I'm getting there. <laughs> yes, actually, Carly. Um, so if you don't catch the paper right there, the next time it pops up is where the bridge was at. And if you still miss it right by the bridge, Nancy falls off. She falls off the bridge. That's actually a second chance that a lot of people don't know about. <clears throat> Guess I better ask permission before oh. I go looking around. My bad. <laughs> How nice of you to drop by. <laughs> and thank you for walking instead of parking in the driveway. I'm expecting a pupil I'd hate for her to have to park on the road. Mr. Topham? Richard Topham at your service. What were you doing just now? I was in the process of trying to make these spoons move by using nothing but my own psychic energy. Have you psychic ever focused energy. sunlight through a magnifying glass <laughs> until it was a minute yet searing point of light, Miss Drew? Uh, yeah, I guess. You see, that's what I do with my cerebral emanations, my thoughts. I focus them until they're a beam of pure energy which ultimately disrupts and transforms the molecular force field surrounding the target object. And you can actually make objects move? And you can actually make objects move? Yes. Well, on occasion. As I tell my students, increasing one's rate of success is simply a matter of practice. Does everyone have paranormal powers? To some degree, yes. The goal of the Topham School for the Study and Development of Paranormal Powers is to enable students to make the most of whatever gifts they have. I take them through exercises designed to help them increase their output of phantasmic energy. If you want to sign up for an introductory session, I believe I have an opening today. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, I'm afraid I'm busy, young lady. Far too busy to engage in idle conversation. She's so forward. You're not trying to hide something, are you? You're not trying to hide something, are you, Mr. Topham? I'll be blunt, Miss Drew. I've discovered that the more time I spend with the, uh, shall we say, intellectually unendowed, the more my cerebral pulsations seem to diminish. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you further unless and until you prove that you are worthy. That is, that your brain waves are not... <gasps> no, I forgot about this. No. Mine. No. My brain waves are just fine. My brain waves are just fine, Mr. Topham. What I have here is an exercise in logic. If you can oh, discern okay. the correct solution, then I'll know that conversing with you will do me no psychic harm. You may take it with you. I thought this was the time where he's like with the spoons. He's like, what card am I holding? Which one am I thinking of? I thought it was this one. <laughs> it's not that good one. Luck and good luck. <laughs> And thank you guys so much for the cheers, Mackenzie, Tori, you guys are the best. We also got to level four on the hype train, because you guys are so amazing. But yeah, look at him. Look at Yuri. Who said that earlier? It was Sammy, huh? Hey, Sammy, first of all. Yeah, I agree with you. We should definitely be able to pet the animals in the Nancy Drew world. Like, what's up with that? It is so hard, I know. Joanna, how are you? Welcome to Secret of the Old Clock. It's so good to have you. I know, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, poor Yuri. Would it be okay if I looked around? Go right ahead. The place is more like a museum than a house. Was this Josiah's clock? Everything in here was Josiah's. All right. Let's 
knock this one out too. Oh, did I just see a bell somewhere? I can't remember. Oh, there it was. Yeah. Butterfly. Sundial. Mm -hmm. If anything, like, this game just has an amazing soundtrack to me. I dare say it may be one of my favorites. <gasps> and that's a bold thing to say, because the music in a, just about every game is so stinking good. Boom. I forget this one takes a bit, yeah, for it to open up. <laughs> so, if you've never seen, I think it's, is it Tori? Your username is Indie Piano. No, Tori underscore Indie underscore Piano. I think. I'm not sure. But if you've never seen her account, Tori underscore ND underscore piano. Okay, good. If you've never seen this, Tori had an excellent, excellent thought on um, a possible game theory that Josiah was most likely a percussionist based on the fact that he has instruments in his home. Also, the fact that he liked poetry. And I think that's so stinking cool. The man on stage in this picture, is that Josiah? Yes, that's from a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream that he directed and starred in. It closed after two nights, but he didn't care. He loved that play. Hmm. Oh yeah, his book. Lest I forget. Where are you when you win Bard Bounce? What poet is the cat's meow? What will Para, my miniature golf course, get you? What's Gloria's middle name? Hmm. Becoder is in the r rivet. Two to the right. Tesla coil. And I love that they added this detail. Buy carousel horse from Sheldon. And he really did. He really bought himself a carousel horse. It looks like Josiah lent a trivet to someone, but I can't make out to whom. Hmm. Okay, putting physics to work in the modern world. Radio meter. That's what you think. Depends on what you do with the light first, pea brain. I think this is supposed to explain the idea of the radio meter in the, uh... <laughs> oh my goodness, Liv. Thank you. Thank you for the 300 cheers. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thanks for the love of my account though, guys. I'm so excited for this week's stuff. Oh, and me too, because I love Danger on Deception Island. So I cannot wait to see what content you're coming out with this week, Tori. But anyways, I think this is supposed to explain the fact that Josiah has a radio meter. You know how it, it all unfolds in the, in the shed? This explains it. <laughs> What do you do with these? I put them on the windshields of cars parked in the area. Great advertising. Ever put them on cars at the Lilac Inn? All the time. I've gotten quite a few pupils that way. I'm rushing like crazy. Oh my gosh, did you actually finish shampooing, Liv? Okay, I'm heading out for a bit. Just wanted to pop in and celebrate with everyone. Bye. Thanks so much for hopping on, Shannon. It was so good to see you.
I always wondered why he had such things like this in his house. I made a theory video on it that somehow Josiah was a part of the circus at one point. I don't know. He could be. Maybe. Oh, I forgot we gotta do his puzzle, don't we? Yeah. All that looks wet. Right. I need like, I wish I had like a sound alert. Boom, boom, boom. That's my sound alert. Boom, boom, boom. That's another word from our list of 1920 slang. So all wet means a bad idea or a person making a mistake. And that has been 20s vocabulary with Carter. <laughs> Doll up. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Am I smart or what? Double cross. I'm getting there. I actually wish we would have got more of these because I think these are so fun. That looks right. Big cheese. Am I smart or what? Was that all of it? I love your theory videos. Well, thank you, Mackenzie. I'm currently still trying to map out episode three because it's such a, there's a lot of connections in that one, so. Am I to assume that you have the correct solution to that logic problem? Sure. I think I do. Let's have a look. Why, you appear to have indeed found the solution. Well. Since you've proved yourself to be intellectually above average, which means talking to you should do me no harm, what would you like to talk about? Wow. Can you imagine someone telling you that? <sighs> uh... When and how did you meet Josiah Crowley? Last summer, while on my way to the university for a conference, I stopped for a bite at the Lilac Inn. Since it was crowded and I was in a hurry, I agreed to share a table with an elderly gentleman who, like me, was by himself. As soon as I told Mr. Crowley who I was and what I did, well, he insisted that I give him a training session that very afternoon and was so thrilled with his progress that he demanded I stay and teach him everything I knew. Mmm. He was a good student? The best. He had his annoying little habits, but his desire to realize his psychic potential was unparalleled. Were you surprised when you found out that Josiah had left you everything? Delighted, yes. Surprised, not really. Josiah was all alone, you see. Surrounded by people like the Crandalls and that banker, Jim Archer. People who were nice to him only because they knew he had money. Mm hmm. Would you happen to know what Gloria Crandall's middle name was? I haven't the foggiest. It was nice talking to you. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> A little <laughs> psychic humor. <laughs> oh no, no. He's too much. Okay. Alright. Let's. Oh, okay, hold on, wait. You know what? I should go ahead and save the game. We'll say, um. Big Cheese. Save. Perfect. I don't think we have everything for this yet, so... Where am I going? Oh, yeah. This way. Oh, a miniature golf course! Swell! The time has come. The time has come. I'm terrified. I am no good at mini golfing. Okay, okay. Have we tried orange down here? And green up there. And blue. Ooh, we're so close, we're so close. So what did I keep the same here? Here. 
nothing was the same, but we still have this one flag. Yeah, the blue flags mean you have one in the right spot. The stick thing means you have right color, wrong spot. Okay, good. Well, at least we have it all generally in the right spot. I'm trying to think. We had two here that was right. But I changed them, though, I think. All in the wrong spot. Well, that's good to know. That means that red probably goes somewhere. Maybe it goes here and orange goes here and green goes here. Still all in the wrong, wrong spot. This is also helpful. So green either goes here or maybe it goes at the top since it was a flag here. And then red maybe here. Orange down here. And blue there. Hmm. So two are in the right spot. So let me keep my green. And switch over my, or I'll, no, 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 put my green here, orange, and blue, still all in the wrong spot. Well, this, at this point, we should be able to solve it by, because if it's not the bottom, and it's not here, and it's not there, then it has to go here. And same for orange. It's not there. It's not there. It's not there. It's here. Green's not there. Green's not here. It's up here. Oh my gosh. Is that it? Oh. Oh my word. Why was that so hard to guess for? <laughs> the moon in the sky was once heard to say it's high time I saw this thing known as day. So the moon checked its clock and rose with the sun and before long it realized just what it had done. It's far too bright here. I've made a mistake. What heat, what havoc the sun can create. I want to go back. So when dusk came again, the moon rose where it should and said, ah, tis heaven. Oh, I need to write down these things. Okay. So once... Two, four, two, eight, two, seven. Perfect. Oh, no, you're good, McKenzie. And thank you so much for the cheers, Tori. Oh, it is time. Okay. Look, it's Bernie. Came all the way from the swamp to see us. Hey, Bernie. Oh, that probably looks a little too hard. <gasps> no. Yeah, this is good. This is a good warm up. This is a good warm up for the future. No. Okay. I that wasn't too bad. Okay. So far we're still under par. Okay. I'm like holding my breath, trying to make sure that I get this. Okay. Ooh, that was so close. I haven't mini golfed in so long.
Hey, look, it's Carson Drew in the train cart. Hey, Dad. Hello, Father. Okay. Oh, this one was. This one's got like this major hill. Okay, hold on. No! Did it go? Oh. I didn't think that one was going to make it. You got a hole in one on this hole last time you replayed? What? No way. Did you really? I've, I don't think I've ever gotten a hole in one on any of these holes. What? Oh, too hard. Ah, oh, still too hard. I hit it too hard. <laughs> you got this, Nancy. Come on. There we go. <gasps> we won? No way. We really did win. A pony. A little toy pony. I like real mini golf, but this stresses me out. <laughs> yeah, this one's not as uh, forgiving, is it? I don't know, though. Sometimes real life mini golf can be pretty not forgiving. Tori, thanks for the cheers, Tori. Also, this reminds me that I started a real life mini golf game on vacation and never finished it because it started storming. Ah, that stinks. And yeah, I bet you guys couldn't get your money back either, huh? Cause like how would how could they how would you know that was gonna happen? All right, let's check some things off. Note to self: when task has been completed, check it off. Check. Check. Oh, that's right. We gotta go talk to Jim Archer. Check. I haven't done that yet. I'm finished with that. Can't check that off yet. I'm finished with that. Check. Man, we're just check. making headway check over that here. Off till it's done. Check. <laughs> Can't check that off yet. Check. Check. All right. Let's go and drive around. Hmm. That car I saw before is gone. Interesting development. So I heard, and I've never tried it before, so this will be a first, that if you press H, your car honks. Stop! It really does! <laughs> I never knew that playing this game! <gasps> Hello, are you Mr. Waddell? Uh, so what if I am? I found this receipt, and I just wondered what you could tell me about it. Let me see that. One key, determine resale value, item 493. Oh yeah, this was for that key Jim Archer wanted me to appraise. Jim Archer wanted you to appraise a key? It was very ornate, had jewels all over it. Fake jewels, as it turned out. When I told him it was worthless, the cheapskate refused to pay me and told me to keep it. Do you think I could have it? Sure, once you pay the appraisal fee. Which is? A dollar and fifty cents. <sighs> Here you go. Good, here's the key. Enjoy. Oh, well that's good, Maggie. At least you didn't have to, like, be out of, uh, the funds for that. Honk like a goose, then he say, waddle, waddle away. <laughs> Tubby telegrams. Something I can do for you? Well, my name's Nancy Drew, and my father say said Say no that... more. You're here to pick up some papers. They're in that envelope. Thank you. You're welcome. Say, is that your roadster out there? Yes, it is. Did I park somewhere I shouldn't have? No, no, it's just that my regular driver never showed up today, so I've got no way to deliver all these telegrams. How would you like to earn some extra cash? You mean you want me to deliver them for you? You've got a car, you're trustworthy, or at least your father thinks you are, so what do you say? I'll pay you 25 cents each time you complete a delivery. And you might a even get quarter. some tips. Okay, sure. Great, you're hired. Here, deliver this to Still... out at Blenheim Nursery. Come back when you're done, and I'll pay you and give you another telegram to deliver. Great. See you in a little while. Eight-year-old me is still salty. We never, like, officially got tips for doing this. Hello. I'm looking for Jim Totally Archer. thought that we right would. That door. Never, ever did. Hello. Are you Nancy Drew? 
Yes. Are you Mr. Archer? Yes. Are you Mr. Archer? Yes, ma'am. Jim Archer. I'm founder, president, manager, and just about everything else you can name when it comes to this fine enterprise. Mm. I hear that some businesses aren't doing so well these days. Ever so since abrupt. the stock market crashed, one business after another has closed, including banks. President Hoover keeps saying that a recovery is just around the corner, but you have to wonder. Some people say we're headed for a depression. Well, that kind of pessimism is not only misguided, it's pointless. Thinking ahead and taking action. That's what we businessmen should be doing right now. And I'm happy to report that we're doing just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Main Street Bank, Jim Archer speaking. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but... Yes, I know, but... All right, then just bring it by. Hmm. Sorry for the interruption. How can I help you? Do you happen to know whether the jewelry Emily inherited from her mother was insured? Well, I know for a fact that it was not. Why? Because someone snuck into the inn today and stole it. Oh, no. I heard there'd been a fire in the kitchen, but... When it rains, it pours, doesn't it? I told Gloria not to let that policy lapse. Why did she let it lapse? She felt that since Josiah Crowley would be leaving her a large sum of money when he died, or so she thought, paying to insure her jewelry just wasn't necessary. How well did you know Josiah Crowley? Well enough for him to name me executor of his will. An executor is the person who makes sure the terms of a will are carried out. Why do you think he wound up leaving Gloria nothing? I have no idea. Truth be told, he'd given me the impression that I would be well taken care of when he passed on too. But when I finally read his will, it all went to top him. Where did Josiah keep his will? He'd hidden it in a chest of drawers in his house. It took me months to find it. When he named me executor, he said he'd tell me where it was hidden when the time was right. Whatever that meant. How did Josiah die? He was sitting in the public library reading when apparently his heart just oh. decided it was time to stop. What was he reading? What was he reading? His favorite book, The Makeup Secrets of Lon Chaney. Hmm. So 25 cents then is about 450 today. Really? Wow. That's a huge difference. Actually, I to be honest with you though, I really I would have thought it would have been a little bit more. That's still a lot, though. You take my song bait as well as the fish Nancy has to catch in this game. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, you know, I was thinking about the duck song today. So I think it was already fresh on my mind. Has anyone ever delivered so many telegrams until they run out? Did they ever run out? Yes, actually, Mackenzie. So there is a YouTube video. And if you search it, it's like, what happens if you deliver all the telegrams in Nancy Drew's Secret All Clock? I think that's the whole title. Someone played... Like there, it's like a whole hour's worth of delivering telegrams, but it's interesting because um, the dialogue of the people that you're delivering the telegrams to, it unfolds and doesn't like tell a story, but it basically builds off each other and it's all references to movies and uh, novels. <gasps> Southern Sleuth Morgan, hello. How are you doing? It's so good to see you. Stop it. You were not. I was. I literally was thinking about it today, and I can't know. I don't remember why. I don't remember why. The will you found in Josiah's house. Is it possible that Josiah didn't really write it? Well, the thought that it could be a forgery did cross my mind. But an expert verified that the will had been typed on Josiah's typewriter and signed in Josiah's hand. Mm-hmm. But Richard Topham lived in Josiah's house. He had access to his typewriter, and he could this have copied true. his signature. As far as the law is concerned, the matter is closed, Miss Drew. But it's possible that Josiah's real will is still out there. Are you sure he never gave you any clue as to where he'd hidden his will? Whenever I asked him, he said he'd tell me when the time is right. Although, he got a safe deposit box here about three years ago. Has it been opened? Has it been opened? Topham has tried to claim its contents, but he can't find the key. Maybe he knows the real will could be in there. Only he wants to destroy it. 
Now, Miss Drew, I wouldn't go jumping to any conclusions. That's such a that's How a wild well story, you know though. Jane Willoughby, you know Emily's guardian. Not well at all. Met her once or twice. Seemed a little flighty. Do you think Emily's going to be able to run the inn by herself? Times are just too tough. If she's smart, she'll sell before the bills start piling up. I guess I'll be going. Goodbye now. All right, Don't let's snoop. Don't you ever use this typewriter? That used to be Josiah Crowley's. It was the only thing he left me in his will. Naturally, it doesn't work. The keys always jam. October 9, 1929. <gasps> Here we go. Dear Mrs. Sheldon, here is the trivet I said you could borrow for your party at Twin Elms. Please take care of it because I will want it back someday. Your friend, Josiah C. I wonder if Josiah ever got his trivet back. Looks like we're going to go investigating. Who's Clara? Clara Pickford is this lonely old woman who comes in here every once in a while. Took a shine to me for some reason. Insisted on giving me that picture. Did Josiah Crowley give you this clock? Yes. Unfortunately, it stopped keeping time almost immediately. It would sure be nice to be able to open this thing. Is that what the key is for? This one? Before I fool around with this, I should make sure it's okay with Mr. Archer. Oh, okay. Mr. Archer. Hello again. The key that you had Mr. Waddell appraise. Could that be the key to the clock that Josiah Crowley gave you? It might have been, I suppose. You know about that? Yes. In fact, I paid the appraisal fee. I have the key right here. How industrious of you. You see, <laughs> when he told me the key was How industrious of you. In it. So, it would be alright if I kept the key for myself? I have no use for it. In fact, if you want that old clock, you can have it too. I guess I'll be going. Nice talking to you. I have you on one screen and live on the other. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Morgan. And thank you, Maggie. You guys are uh, really kind supporters to do, be doing both. So thank you. Okay, you know what? Gear puzzles really get me sometimes, but at least on this gear puzzle, they kind of help you out with the lines. You know what I'm saying? Like, if not for these lines, it would be so much harder. We got all the mirrors. We have three. I think we just need... Is it one more or do we really have all the mirrors? Oh, yeah. Is this your car? Yes, it is. Bought and paid for. All right. Well, let's skedaddle on our way out of here. We've got more places to drive to. So I don't know if you guys caught the pre-stream with all the facts. But if not, I'm just going to see... Beep. See the big 7-5 that they put on the train? That is in honor of Nancy's 75th birthday when this game came out. So they just snuck that in the game there for all the players. Yeah, Twin Elms, here it is. Mrs. Sheldon? Yes? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall's. Get on with it, dear. <laughs> I was wondering, would it be possible for me to see the trivet you borrowed from Josiah Crowley? You may not only see it, you may have it. Once I find it, that is. Unfortunately, I've an errand to run, so I can't look for it right now. Maybe I could run the errand for you. I have a car. So I see. A rather expensive car at that. <laughs> Very well, Miss Drew. Go rather fetch my expensive bridge car, car at that. And upon your return, I shall present you with that trivet. Who's Miss Joukowsky? The local telephone operator. You can find her at her house or Titusville Telco, as she insists <laughs> on calling it. The switchboard is in her parlor. As you can imagine, she never entertains. I, on the other hand, am expecting company within the hour, so do hurry. 
Hmm. All right, let's go. Oh, is it this way? Yeah. Yeah. Are you Miss Jakowski? Yeah, and you are? Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall's. You know, at the Lilac Inn. Oh, yeah, I put you next to your <laughs> mother, didn't I? You pick up those papers for him yet? Actually, I... Wait a minute. How did you know about that? See this headset I'm wearing? I plug it in and, oh, what do you know? I hear things. Look, I'm kind of pressed for time. Going to a party and it takes me a while to get dolled up. What do you need? Mrs. Sheldon asked me to pick up her bridge cards from you. Tell you what, I'll get you those cards if you drive that fancy car of yours over to the orphanage and pick up some raffle tickets from Mrs. O'Shea. I should be able to unload a ton of them tonight. I'd be happy to. Good, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I cannot imagine, like, you, back in the day, someone's just listening into your entire phone call. Oh, man. Excuse me, are you Mrs. O'Shea? Yes. My name is Nancy Drew, and... Stephen, put that down this instant. We do not run with sticks in our hands. Or in our mouths. <laughs> I'm sorry. You were saying? Miss Joukowsky asked me to pick up some raffle tickets from you. Oh, yes, the raffle tickets. The fact of the matter is I... Elsie, no hitting. I can't even think about those raffle tickets right now. I promised the children they'd each get a toy for going a full week without breaking anything. And I'm short five toys. Do not eat that, Clarence. Would you like yeah, to Clarence. for you? Oh, goodness, if you could do that, I'd be forever grateful. They can be any kind of toy at all. The children aren't the least bit picky. Of course it tastes bad, Clarence. It's a pine cone. <laughs> I'd better go rinse out his mouth before. Uh. Oh, would you look at that? He's actually chewing it. You're not a squirrel, Clarence. Spit You're not a squirrel, Clarence. I'm telling you, this this game is so quotable. Now that I think about it. <laughs> You're not a squirrel, Clarence. <laughs> I know. Maybe I could buy some toys for the orphans in here. Do I, have enough, do, uh, do I even have enough for this? A vending machine that just sells toys. Keen. Keen. How many toys was I supposed to buy? Five? Okay, so I have just enough. No, I couldn't imagine that either. Like, I mean, someone's switching you to the right phone number, but they can listen in at any time they want. No, I could not. Oh, I didn't even think about that same sharing the same phone line with your neighbors. Oh. Hmm. So anyways, I don't th actually in the pre-stream when I was talking about this, I forgot to actually kind of finish that uh, a little bit of that. But M. Benson Aviation, the reason why they created the, the poster to be aviation specifically is because Mildred uh, Benson went on to go be a uh, pilot um, and she flew planes for a little bit in her life. She was actually doing all kinds of adventuresome things just like Nancy, diving off of cliffs into rivers, canoeing in like places. She was obsessed with Mayan culture. Um, so she kind of was a little bit of a Nancy Drew herself, but that's actually the kind of Easter egg here. I think you see this in uh, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, but you also see it in the general store here is M. Benson Aviation. But anyways, let's buy some toys. Two toys down, three to go. I have another toy. Oh, I can give them the pony. I didn't know I could do that. Yeah. That makes three toys. Just some toys. I just need one more. Interesting, you know, things that they like to hide in their games, which I always think are so cool. Five toys, that's all I need. 
Did you really? You just played mini golf over and over until you had enough toys? Oh my goodness. I don't know if I would survive playing mini golf that many times. Since I'm so bad at it. Five toys for me? I certainly do. Oh, that's <gasps> really? wonderful. You're such a saint. You hear me? A saint. I better get these inside before the children see them. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. O'Shea, the raffle tickets? Oh, the raffle tickets? I don't have them, dear. Is it, you, you don't mean you don't have them? Sprinchel. Then just take them straight to Miss Joukowsky. We don't pull hair, Ralphie. Especially when we have jelly on our hands. <sighs> Phelps print shop. Wonderful. <laughs> oh my goodness, poor Nancy. No, I. you know what? I did not know. Oh, it's right here, isn't it? I did not know Sorry, that you got different I'm colored ponies. I'm just here to pick up the raffle tickets you printed for Mrs. O'Shea. No, oh, darn it. I did tell her I'd have those done today, didn't I? Well, I'm sorry, but they're just going to have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, but I need to have them today. And I need to go fishing. 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 My brother-in-law <laughs> thinks he's hot stuff because he caught an 18-inch largemouth bass this morning. So I bet him I could catch a 19-incher by the end of the day. And if I do, I get This is just wild. Nancy money. literally goes and does if everything. I don't, he gets mine. And since stamp collecting is about the only hobby I can afford these days, I'm going fishing. I know. You stay here and print those raffle tickets, and I'll go fishing for you. How does she Not do it? Not everybody can catch a 19-inch largemouth bass, you know. It takes skill and muscle and brains. Excuse me. Bass are pretty smart. I'm Nancy Drew. I can do it, Mr. Phelps. <laughs> You better be right, because you're not getting those raffle tickets until I get my 19-incher. You can use my gear. I left everything out at the fishing hole. Great. I'll see you later. Alrighty. I don't remember what area is the best for fishing, because I know you can like look at that in the shed. But I'm going to just guess. First thing I need to do is bait my hook. We're going to say grubs. Yuck. Now I toss this in the water, and when the bobber goes under the water, I need to pull the line up fast. And we'll do it. Up. I got a fish. Ah. Uh. Release. This doesn't look like a largemouth bass. Maybe is it is it worms, minnows, worms? We're just guessing over here. I got a fish, an old shoe. Maybe there's money inside it. Is it really? Look at that! <gasps> I caught money! What? Now that's my kind of fishing. I got a whole quarter. Yeah, no, I did not know that. I didn't know you could get colorful ponies. I really did not know that. It was actually her streams that inspired me to do it. Huh. I caught one! Yeah, there we go. Looks like 19 inches to me. Yeah, I usually end up uh, looking at the car too. Ew, that fish I caught really smells. <laughs> Let's see what you got in there. How about that? You did it. Here, let me take it from you. <laughs> Please do. I think it's starting to get a little ripe. Just rest yourself a minute while I get those raffle tickets. There you go. Ten dozen tickets <laughs> to the annual orphan's benefit. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go make a telephone call. To your brother-in-law? Yeah, the one who used to collect stamps. <laughs> Bye. Cobalt Puppy, hey, how are you? Welcome to Secret of the Old Clock. Morgan, 
I know, isn't that... They're so nice for that, right? Hi, you got those raffle tickets for me? I sure do. Great. And here are Mrs. Sheldon's bridge cards. One of the gals spilled Moxie all over them. But I cleaned them up real good, so let's not tell Mrs. Sheldon, okay? Okay. Thanks for your help, Miss Joukowsky. Thanks for your help. Bye now. Her and Liv, towards the beginning of the stream, started gifting streams to everyone. So kind. I don't like the fishing in this mini game, but I like it more than the White Wolf one. Oh yeah, I like this one the most too. Do you have my bridge cards? Right it here. is very similar oh, to um, is trivet. I didn't realize when I asked to borrow it that the it was fishing such in saw, but once a creature Kapu Cave. Yeah. Buff Stroganoff was placed atop it. I assure you, no one knows. <laughs> She's so silly. Now do run along. My guests will be arriving any minute, and that dress of yours is uh, well. Wow. I like this dress. It's very flouncy. Alright, well we got half a tank of gas. We better get back to the lilacan. I've only got half a tank of gas left. That's what I just I said, Nancy. Up before I forget. What is moxie? Actually, I think that's another one of our words. I think. Hold on, let me see. Yes, moxie. Okay. So, here we go. Moxie. Moxie is skillful or spirited. Moxie was also the name of the first mass-produced soft drink in America. It was a formula originally concocted around 1864 and sold as a cure-all medication. Moxie soft drinks were favored by President Calvin Coolidge, America's 30th president, who served from 1923 to 1929. And that was some interesting information from our Secret of the Old Clock Strategy Guide. <laughs> okay, what do, what, do, what, do we, what do we have here? Oh yeah, we have the trivet. Mm hmm. We also are looking. We need another mirror. Oh, we should call Bess and George. Yeah, I forgot we could Hi, talk to them. Could you please connect me with Bess Marvin at KL54468? Just a second. Hello? Hi, Bess. It's Nancy. George, get over here. It's Nancy Drew. So, how's the lilac in? Beautiful. Are the lilacs blooming? Like crazy. They mm. smell so good. Oh, it's I like bet the it air is so made good. of perfume. Hi, Nancy. Is that you, George? Ouch, that's my foot. Well, move over. But I can't hear. You move over. Then I can't hear. Look, just hold the phone like this, okay? <laughs> there. Can you hear us? I can hear you fine. It would be so nice to have two phones in this house. We don't even have a telephone at our house. So quit griping. So, Nancy, what's the scoop? Has either of you ever been to the Lilac Inn? I have. They have the best cherry pie there. It's like you get Yum. a whole cherry tree in every piece. Hello? Is someone on the line? Hello? We're on the line, Mrs. Farthingham. Well, get off. I need to make a call. <laughs> but we just got on. Then it should be no problem for you to get off. Just give us one more minute, Mrs. Farthingham, please. Oh, all right. You have one more minute. Go on, Nancy. What were you saying? Just that I... Shh. Wait a minute, Mrs. Farthingham. Would you mind hanging up? I'll quit. <laughs> oh, how I wish we didn't have to share a phone line with her. Just be grateful you have a phone, Bess. Underrated phone character. Secret of the old clock. That was great. Some jewels were stolen out of Emily's room this morning at the same time that a fire destroyed the stove in the kitchen. Destroyed the stove? You mean they can't bake any more cherry pies? Not for a while. Emily's worried that she may have to sell the inn. Is that bad? I mean, she's only 17. I think she'd like to hang on to it because her mom would have wanted her to. I sure wouldn't want to be saddled with something like that. Even if it meant having all the cherry pie you could eat? I hadn't thought of it that way. Helping run the inn is all she's ever known. Are you girls still on the line? We're not done talking yet. Well, I've been patient long enough. You girls get off right now. But we right now, or the next call I make will be to your, your father. father. <laughs> your father. <laughs> That's all right. I'll call you later. And I'll thank you not to listen in. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Farthingham. Only nosy busybodies listen in on other people's phone calls. Burn. Hang 
up and be quick about it. Bye, Nancy. Talk to you soon. Yes, I agree, Mackenzie. I think the voice actresses for those two characters were so good in the older games. Sammy said, we tracked down a bottle when I was a kid and it was really gross. Really? Tori says, apparently it also tastes similar to root beer, but with a bitter aftertaste. What? How did you even find a bottle, Sammy? That's a, that's like, because it's really old. So, is Emily all right? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? Oh, I forgot to tell her that, didn't I? She was showing it to me just before the explosion. Now it's gone. Someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers, if you can't trust a fireman, who can you trust? Are you sure no one besides you and Emily was in the kitchen this morning? Positive. Well, I suppose someone could have snuck in the back door. Are you saying someone caused that fire on purpose? To distract us? Emily swears she turned the stove off after she used it. But I'm the only one who knew she had that jewelry. Well, it's not quite true. When Gloria was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry. It's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess better go call the sheriff. Is backwater burg another one of our... our uh... It is. Okay. All right. New vocabulary word, everyone. Backwaterburg is a remote and stagnant or unchanging town, a place out of the flow of life and news. Backwaterburg. Have you met Richard Topham? Yeah, I've had the displeasure of meeting that quack. <laughs> Somehow he knew who I was before he even saw me. He came over while they were putting out the fire today. Asked me who you were, and I was so frazzled at the time, I told him. I don't usually give that crackpot the time of day. Does everybody around here feel that way about him? Not everybody. Like that circus fella said, there's a sucker born every minute. Me? I think ESP is a lot of J-U-N-K. Where did that barred bounce game that's in the parlor come from? Do you know? Emily says Josiah Crowley brought it in one day and just left it. Said it was so guests, as in him, would have something to do while they waited for a table. Does the miniature golf course that's out back belong to the inn? No, that was Josiah Crowley's. Way I hear, he built it himself. Have you tried it out? Me? Please, I got better things to do with my time. <laughs> what was Emily's mom's middle name? Do you remember? Of course I do. It was... Oh, piffle. It's right on the tip of my tongue. It was... It was... Ugh. It'll pop into this feeble brain of mine one of these days. Why don't you just go ask Emily? Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. Hmm. Let's go talk to Emily, shall we? Hi, Nancy. Did Josiah ever say anything about hiding his will somewhere? No, but he was always hiding stuff. I know because he was always writing reminders to himself about how to find it. But whenever the subject of his will came up, he'd just say he was happy knowing we were going to be happy when he passed on. Time will tell. That's all he'd say. Hmm. What was your mother's middle name? Lois. Why? Oh, just curious. Lois. Do you have any idea where Josiah may have hidden a safe deposit box key? He could have hidden it anywhere. He always said his favorite hiding place was right under people's noses. I'll be back in a little bit. Thanks again, Nancy. Okay, so... Now we know what her mother's middle name was, we should be able to open the shed. Oh, really? They, so they still make a few small batches of Moxie. Think they sell them at vintage diners. Ah. That's cool. I didn't know that they still, like, they would even still make that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> Dad's rules of the road. Where is it at that tells you? Or maybe she didn't write it down. Hmm. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like she wrote it down. So let's go read the book again. Google says the sweet soda is similar to root beer with a bitter aftertaste. It is flavored with a root extract, an extremely bitter substance commonly used in herbal medicine. Oh. Yeah, that doesn't sound tasty at all. <laughs> I'm going to poke around some more, if that's okay. I don't mind. Hi, Moody Blake, how are you? It's so good to see you. Welcome As to the stream. As you soon realized, Josiah's mental faculties were starting to go, I'm afraid. He tended to ramble. Very little of what he wrote in there makes sense. Okay, let's see the questions. What are you when you win? So it's po- No, no, Keen. Keen, let's- What poet is the cat's meow? Is that Omar, the poet from the book at Lilac Inn? What will par my pony and Lois? So I just needed to know what the order was. All right, let's go fill it in. Keen. Okay, I think it was Omar was next, right? Yeah, Omar. And then Pony. Pony. Pony, Pony, Pony. And then Lois, and then that should be it. I have been waiting to catch one of your streams. Your YouTube popped up in my recommended, and not gonna lie, you've been what I've watched before, but for the past like week. Oh, well, thank you, Moody Blake. That's very kind of you. I'm so glad we got to catch each other so we could chat. Oh, that's not right. It's not Loy. It's Lois. Yes. Okay. Okay. The, yeah, this is the brochure for the fish. That's right. I've heard that you can enter these before Nancy actually gets the info, but I don't know if that's true. Yeah, actually, I think one time I played, um, Maggie, I did just, like, go, because I remembered what they were, and I just, I was able to get in. Actually, I think in this game, and this is like a lot of the earlier games you can do this, I'm pretty sure you can skip almost everything in this game. Like, you can totally, you can go, like, the whole game without talking to some characters. You can go without doing any, um, of the telegram. You can n never fill up on gas. You can skip a lot in this game, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, oh, the clock. Something about this clock reminds me of the poem That's I saw right. at the mini golf course. Okay, so, uh, one... Two. Four. Wait, no, that wasn't right. Go back, go back, go back. This is 12, right? Yeah. That's one. One. Two. Three. Four. Back to two. Oh, yeah, to eight. So that would be... So six, seven, eight. Back to two. And then seven. Hee <laughs> hee. That was right. So we should have all the mirrors now. Me too. You seem so cool and genuine. Oh, well, thank you, Moody Blake. Thank you. Um, that's very kind of you to say. And you too, Morgan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've heard about the no telegram, no gas playthroughs. In later games, they block you from regressing, or occasionally you get an Easter egg. Yeah, it is true though. I those earlier games. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Like I think maybe. Um, I wonder what goes here. Haunted carousel. Maybe you can skip some stuff. Maybe I don't know. So I also had a um. If I could let some light in here, I might be able to reflect it off these mirrors. So I actually had a theory that Josiah Crowley is like a master genius because like you can see all of these things that he has 
essentially created from his brain. All these master drawings. So how do I... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the power. So we just need to set this straight and we should be able to do the power, no? Five. Two. Six. Three. This should be it. Okay. Just giving you guys a heads up. This cutscene is probably going to be loud. All the cutscenes in Nancy Drew games are so loud. So, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Something tells me I need to adjust the mirrors so that the light bounces off of them and onto that radiometer. Oh, yeah. We're going to do this first, huh? Okay, so our ears have been spared. <laughs> but I'll, I will warn you guys before the cutscene. So I think if, if it's coming from this way and it bounces here, we just gotta bounce this one. And then that one can go... Right there. Which can then go... Ah, oh, very close. Oh, maybe this is this not the right way? Oh no, maybe it's not. Maybe this one should go here. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. There we go. I think that's right. Because then that one would... Okay, now here comes the cutscene. My apologies. It's going to be loud. Secret passageway! Moody Blake said, I haven't played any of the Nancy Drew games, but I've been meaning to check them out. Oh, oh my goodness. You definitely gotta check them out. They're so, so good. There's so many, too, that are just like outstanding, phenomenal games. And they're really chill, too. No, no, Moody Blake. They're no, they're good. They do have some challenging puzzles, but for the most part, I think they're they're just real chill. Ordered new quartz from Kohlmeister Crystal Company. Paid four dollars seventy four cents. Highway robbery. Delivery to take six weeks. Maybe I should ask Richard hmm. Topham if this crystal ever got delivered. Yeah. So we need to find out about the crystal. Forget where you put Lwat? What is Lwat? Marshall's ban, the old coot? I just want you to know, essentially, that is basically what I do for myself, and I leave myself post-it notes everywhere all over the house. I'm like, oh, don't forget to do this. <laughs> so that way I never forget. Uh... I've seen these symbols before. They were in that newspaper story about hobos. It's hobo sign language. Hmm. Interesting. We've got things to go ask Mr. Topham, I feel like. Let's go. Let's go talk to this guy. Hello, Miss Drew. Hi, Mr. Topham. Over here, Miss Drew. Now what? <gasps> He's got the spoons out, you guys. I think it's time. 
No. Mm. Do you mind if I look around some more? Be my guest. Oh, no. now what? Do you by any chance know who Marcel is? Marcel was what Josiah called his favorite hat. His hat? The man named his hat? <laughs> he loved that hat, so to him, naming it made perfect sense. Do you still have Marcel? Do you still have Marcel? No, as a matter of fact, I gave that hat to Gloria Crandall. She mm. said she was fond of the old fellow and wanted something to remember him by. Although I suspect the real reason she wanted that hat was to see if he'd stashed any money in it. We'll have to go talk to Emily. Josiah ordered something from the Krollmeister Crystal Company just before he passed away. Do you know if it ever arrived? You must be talking about that chunk of quartz that came last winter. I still have it right here. Why? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm a rock collector. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm a rock collector. <laughs> Do you think I could have it? Perhaps we can Nancy's work the worst out. liar ever. You see, amazing as this is going to sound, I am able to project my thoughts into another person's brain. Really? Really? The only problem is, not everyone has the intellectual capacity to receive my thoughts. But since you have already demonstrated a high level of intelligence, yes, you may very well be the ideal subject. Subject? As in, experiment? You are going to help me prove that I am telepathic. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to shuffle a deck which contains okay. five sets of these cards. Here goes. Then I'm going to turn my back, draw a card, look at it, and start transmitting my thoughts. When you receive my thoughts, you will identify the card I'm looking at. Once you correctly identify five cards in a row, I'll give you that piece of quartz. But what if I can't do it? Just stay focused on the cards and my superior brain power will do the rest. Very well, let's begin. He's such, he's such a big-headed... Big-headed man. Okay, what card is this? Uh, circle. I think it's this one. Wrong. Here's another. Can hmm. you tell me what card this is? Square. This one. No, try again. What card am I thinking about? Star. This one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. Do you know what card I'm looking at? The cross. This one? That's not right. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? I think it's this one. Wrong. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. What card am I concentrating on? Oh, I'm supposed to be writing this down, huh? Okay. Concentrating on star. This one? Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. What card am I holding? Mm. This one? This one. That's not right. Here's another. Do you know what card I'm looking at? I think it's this one. Wrong. Here's another. What card am I looking at? What is it? What card am I looking at? Uh, circle? This one? Wrong. Here's another. What card is this? I don't know. This one? Wrong. Oh my gosh. Whenever he picks up a particular card, he always says the same thing. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You how, how many Ready phrases does he have Very for well, these cards? Let's begin. Can you tell me what card this is? Mm. I think it's this one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? Which card am I thinking? He has at least 10. Oh my gosh. Which card am I thinking of? Uh, square. This one. Wonderful. Oh, here's another. That's it. Can you tell me what card this what is? What was that? What was that phrase? Was it which card am I thinking of? Am I thinking? Can you tell me what card this is? Uh, 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 is this one? This one. Marvelous. <gasps> Here's another. We got it what again. What card am I concentrating on? Can you tell me what card this is? Oh, okay. What card am I concentrating on? Uh, the waves? This one. Wonderful. <gasps> what Here's the another. what? Tell me, what card is what? this? What card 
Am I concentrating? Tell me, what card is this? Uh, uh, mm. Is it the circle? I think it's Not that this one. one. Wrong. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? Tell me, what card is this? Can you imagine Nancy's like sitting there writing down each phrase like in front of him? Um, yeah, you, you bet. bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. What card am I holding? What card am I holding? Um, so it's not the waves one. I wrote that one down. So is it this one? This one? Incorrect. You mm. must focus. Here's another. What card am I looking at? Didn't we already do looking one? It wasn't the circle one, right? Maybe it's the square. This one? That's not right. Oh, no. Here's another. What card am I concentrating on? It's not looking. Is it the waves? This one. Very good. Yeah. Here's another. Okay, we're getting what it. What card am I looking at? What card am I looking at? This one. Marvelous. Yeah. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? What card am I looking at? What card am I thinking of? Uh, thinking, thinking, thinking. It was square. This one? Very good. Yeah. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a I row. I think we only missed we one continue? or you two bet. on that one, maybe? Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. What card am I looking at? What card am I looking at? Okay, so it's not circle. It's not square. Is it cross? This one? Incorrect. You mm. must focus. Here's another. Can you tell me what card this is? Oh, it's this one. This one. Wonderful. Here's another. Can you tell me what card this is? Did we just do that one? I think it's this one. Excellent. Here's another. What card am I holding? What card am I holding? I don't know. Uh, 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 the circle. This one. You go, girl. Here's <laughs> another. What uh, card am I thinking about? You go, girl. So funny. What card am I thinking about? Uh, what card are you thinking about? Mm, it's hard to tell. I'm gonna say square. This one. Very good. I wonder, could he be telling me what card he's picking up by which question he asks me? Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. We have Ready to get all five, are. right? Very well. Let's begin. What card am I holding? All right. What card am I holding? I think it's the circle one. This one? Yes. Here's another. This is which card? Now we haven't gotten that phrase before. This is which card? Hmm. I'm gonna have to guess. I think it's what, that this one? one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. This is which card? Oh, we got it again. Uh, star? This one. Wrong. Oh. Here's another. What card am I looking at? What card am I looking at? What card am I looking at? Ah, uh, star. This one. Very good. Here's another. What card am I holding? Holding. Uh, 
uh, circle? This one. Very good. Well, you failed to correct Oh, we're so close. I think we only missed Shall one. Continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Okay, so close. Let's begin. Let's do it. What card am I looking at? What card am I looking at? That one is the star one. This one. Very good. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? Which card am I thinking of? That's the square. This one. Very good. Here's another. Do you know what card I'm looking at? <gasps> I don't know that one. Do you know what card I'm looking at? Is it the star? I think it is. No, it wasn't this that one. one. You go, girl. <gasps> it was. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? Oh, okay. Uh, which card am I thinking of? Uh, uh, square. I think it's this one. Marvelous. <gasps> Here's another. What card am I looking at? Star? What card am I looking at? This one. Very good. <gasps> we did, did it. it. Well, actually, I did it. But in any case, wow. thank you for your assistance. Here's the piece of crystal oh, that Josiah okay. ordered. Take it. You've earned it. Well, actually, I earned it, but let's not quibble. But, Mr. Topham, I didn't really... I mean, you didn't really... I mean, I'm afraid it subconsciously you may have... <sighs> yes? Never mind. <laughs> do you need anything else? What do you think happened to the key to Josiah's safety deposit box? Josiah no doubt lost it. He had a terrible memory, poor fellow. Are you still looking for the key? What's the point? No doubt it's filled with the same thing as this house. Junk. But if it's junk, why haven't I gotten rid of it, you may well ask. Well, I know it's silly to hang on to Josiah's things, but he was a wonderful man, you see. And I just don't have the heart to get rid of them. Too mm. sentimental for my own good, I guess. It was oh, nice I'm the same way about everything. Good day. Tori, thanks for the cheers. That was such a difficult thing to get through. <laughs> so now that we have the quartz, we can go get it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to Mr. Waddle. Yeah, Mr. Wad Waddell. What did I say, Waddle? I'm still thinking about the song from earlier. That's done. Oh, we did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we did That's that. Done. I'm finished with that. That I'm Oh my goodness. We're That's checking done. off everything. I'm finished. I'm finished with that. That's done. That's done. That I'm finished with that. I'm check. That's done. Check. That's done. Check. I'm finished with that. Oh my goodness. Can't check that off till it's done. That, that's done. Can't check. I haven't done. Wow. We literally checked off almost our entire list. Okay. Let's go to Mr. Waddell. This is true. I do hoard because I love. <laughs> Not because I think there's a will somewhere. Okay. Hello, Mr. Waddell. Now what? I need for you to cut a blank from this piece of quartz. No big deal. Let's Wait, do we have to pay the for this? The blank needs to be just like the one you made before for Josiah Crowley. Two dollars. No big deal. You're gonna have to cough up two dollars, though. You can pay me when no. you pick it up. No. Two dollars. Now we have to go. Uh, two dollars. Okay, so we have to go deliver things now. I assume. Make some money. Oh. Hello, I've got a telegram for Seymour. Just leave it on the desk there. I'd uh, tip you, but as you can see, my hands are filthy. What are you doing? I'm trying to doll up some of my plants before this guy named Mr. Martin comes in. He's a big cheese at some oil company, and I'm hoping he... Ow! Did that plant just bite you? <gasps> it did kind of feel that way. I think I'll be going now. Bye! Maybe he has one of those plants uh, from Blackmore Manor. Okay. Let's get gas. Let's get some money. 
Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Take this to Counselor Alice out at Camp Avondale. Keep up the good work. Hey, we just need one more dollar. Well, I lie. We actually need some gas. But we also need a dollar. Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 25 cents worth, please. That'll be 25 cents. Here you go. Thank you, miss. Anything else? No, thank you. Drive zippily. Okay. And now we can go deliver this. Hi, I've got a telegram for a counselor here named Alice. That's me. Hang on. Oh, go dry up, Jason. <laughs> what a jokester. Anyway, thanks. I'm afraid I don't have any money to tip you. That's okay. Have a swell day. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Moody Blake. We were talking about that earlier about gas being super cheap. Because it's climbing on up there. It's kind of going back up. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's well, you can get a good chunk of money and later in the game. Telegram. Deliver telegrams. this to Mr. Jones at Vash's Dairy. Keep can up you? the good work. You can? Wait, where? Oh, Vash's Dairy. I'm trying to think where. <gasps> oh, you can. Aha. I forgot about that. Hello, I need to deliver this telegram to Mr. Jones. That's me, thanks. You can tell me I'm all wet, but I don't have any money to tip you with. Wait a minute, here, how about a nice fresh glass of milk? Uh, no, thank you. Bye. Oh, this is one of your favorite Nancy Drew games. Ah, oh, it's a really, really good one. It's so light and happy. And so I'm glad we're playing it today. And also did to you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Miss Ross at Sunnybrook Farm. Keep up the good work. And also too because um we've been celebrating mysteries on Carter Plays this month in oh, August. I have a tank of gas left. What? Did I not just fill up? Deck. Hi, I have a telegram from Miss Ross. My name's Rebecca. And I'm only 10, but I'll deliver it to her for you, I promise. I won't let you down or double cross her. And I feel like there's like no that. better mystery well, to celebrate okay. with than the Thank one that Rebecca. started it all, right? Well, Secret well, of the Old Clock? I mean, you're welcome. One of the first early Nancy Drew mysteries. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. You sure Deliver did. You sent me Bob out at the observatory. You Keep sent me your uh you just teleported them to my brain, Tori. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, the observatory. Okay, if we just deliver two more, we'll get our two dollars. But I also need gas. I'm supposed to deliver this telegram to Dr. Bob. That would be me. Thank you. Wow, that's a big telescope. Come back after dark and I'll let <gasps> you take a look. You can consider it your tip. I may just do that. Bye-bye. Always wanted to actually do that. And as a kid playing this game, I thought we were really going to be able to come after dark and see the stars. Still so sad they let us on like that. <laughs> no, I don't really have a whole lot of gas left. But I also don't want to pay for the gas. <sighs> did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. That's here's me, baby. And here's Driving on telegram. empty. Deliver this to Miss Temple at Lowood Academy. Keep up the good work. Are you guys like a risk it kind of driver? Like you're going to drive on as low as possible until you absolutely just have to fill up because that's Welcome me to Zippy's, <laughs> i know that's not good service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest fill her up just 25 cents worth please yeah you know i didn't realize that mckinsey that'll be 25 cents here you go drive zippily that is so true though yeah you're right all the answers are given to us Mmm. 
Where's... Oh, Logwood Academy's over here. Hello, I've got a telegram for Miss Temple. I am she. We teachers don't get paid much, you know. I understand. Uh, did this by any chance used to be the Brewster Academy? Why, yes it did. Thought so. Bye. Hmm. I think Brewster Academy used to be a name of the school from a game, I mean from a book, Nancy Drew book. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Dr. Ackerman out at the Deer Mountain Resort. Keep up the good work. Oh, we only, oh, we don't have much left. One more telegram and we can skedaddle back to our mystery. I've only got half a tank of gas left. What? I should gas up before I forget. Did I not just fill up? <laughs> That's what it's like when you when you when you're driving out there, man. Hello, I'm delivering a telegram to Dr. Ackerman. I shall deliver gas it to goes the good so doctor fast. forthwith. He rarely tips, and I never do. That's okay. Bye. It's too close to being real, real life for me. Oh. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one's for old man Johnson out at his farm. Keep up the good work. All right, let's go get our quartz. So you get, you start sweating when it gets like halfway empty. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Waddell. Are you done making that blank? Have you got my fee? Right here. Good. Here's the blank I cut for you. Enjoy. That's so funny. I love how we're all different on that, too. Because, like, to me, my car will be like, you have nine miles left on your car. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I guess I should go fill up. Noise. Noise. Okay, so we have the quartz. Um, let's go see if we can talk to Emily. And she can tell us her... about the hat, right? Hi, Nancy. Would you happen to know where your mother put Josiah's favorite hat? Look in the drawer right below me. Yeah. That's where all mom's mementos are. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. It's so sad when she says okay like that. Ooh. Maybe this is the key to Josiah's safe deposit box. Just gonna tuck that in my inventory. You don't need to look at everything in there, do you? Sorry. Sorry, my bad. I'm just, I'm a detective, it's what I do. Okay, so let's go see Mr. Archer. No, you don't fill up anymore since you work from home, literally been two years? No way. That's a long time. I wish I was as disciplined as you. I really do. It's such a bad habit. I've been trying to like get Hello myself again. to stop. I'm like, if I just go ahead and do it now, it won't be so bad when I have to do it. Cause like, for example, I'll come home from work and I need gas, but I'll like, I'll just do it in the morning. You never say that. Cause you'll, it, it's always worse in the morning. <laughs> like waking up, getting gas before work, something always happens and you're late. Every time. Mm, was that your car? Oh, was yeah. Was that your car I saw parked near the Lilac Inn this morning? I haven't been there in months. You saw someone else's car. It's a very popular make and color, you know. Hmm. I just wonder what it was doing there. Probably just someone sneaking onto that miniature golf course that Josiah built back there. Or bootleggers. I hear they frequent that area, too. What's your opinion of Richard Topham? Interesting gentleman who's in an interesting line of work. Do you think he really does what he says he can do? He makes a living doing whatever it is he does. So obviously someone thinks he's the real deal. I think I found the key to Josiah's safe deposit box. Really? I have it right here. It is from this bank. May I see if open it opens it. the box? Open it, open it, it open it. It takes two keys to open a safe deposit box. The owner's key and my key. And in this mm -hmm. case, I'm under no obligation to open it for you. 
Oh, but I... However, were you to do me a small favor... Such as? I hired a seamstress to make a Such dress as... for my wife's birthday next week. Unfortunately, the seamstress and I had a... No. ...falling out. And now I need to find someone to finish the dress. <laughs> Just hire a new seamstress. Just hire a new seamstress. Well, the fact of the matter is, the dressmaker quit because I couldn't pay her. I misled you before. Business is not fine. This bank is on the brink of ruin. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Archer. I wanted to get my wife something nice because, well, it might be the last nice thing she gets for a long, long time. Now, Emily once mentioned that Jane used to be a dressmaker. How much more has to be done on the dress? I have it right here. The seamstress said that all the pieces have been cut out and basted together. All that's needed is a sewing machine. When it's finished, bring it back and I'll let you try that key in Josiah's safe deposit box. I guess I'll be going. Come back anytime. Oh, okay. Lots of things here. I'm really bad at this puzzle. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But also, I also feel so bad for him too. Makes me, it, cause it just like the music cuts off. He's just sitting there telling you about this, and I'm just like, no, don't enter into bankruptcy. Oh, Nancy, I'm afraid there's been more trouble. Hmm. Don't tell me something else blew up. It's Emily. She. Oh, this is silly. I'm her guardian. I should just make her sell this place. She's only 17, for Pete's sakes. She should be out meeting boys and going to parties, not trying to run a business. Miss Willoughby, what happened? Just go ask her and make her tell you everything. Oh, jeez. Okay. Ugh, I wish I didn't have to go anywhere, lol. My college classes started back up today, and it's 45 minutes to campus, and then I have a class at a different campus another 35 minutes away. <gasps> no. I'm sorry they're so far apart from each other. That's a really pretty good bit of driving to do. If you ever get stuck somewhere because you messed up and flew too close to the gas tank sign, I want to text just knowing <laughs> that it happened. Okay, so far it hasn't happened yet, but I've gotten pretty close. I literally own two cars and I never drive, but they're taken care of, and we try to drive them when we go out shopping or whatever. Keep them tanks full. <laughs> but at least, but that's a good thing though, you know, that you get take care of them, but also that you're not putting a lot of mileage on it and getting to save on gas. That's always a plus. Jane told you, didn't she? What happened? What happened? That picture on the wall over there, I saw it move. I was just sitting here and it moved all by itself. I saw it move. I really did. Last mm. week, a book fell off the shelf for no reason. And before that, I heard these weird noises. And almost every day I hear a voice, like a whisper, coming out of nowhere. Jane thinks it's nerves, but I... I don't want to talk about this. Did you see Jim Archer? I'm afraid I don't have very good news. The jewelry wasn't insured? No, but I do have some good news, sort of. Shh! Did you hear that? Hear what? Shh! I wasn't expecting Nothing. that. I'm going to have to sell the inn, aren't Ooh. I? You know, it's possible, just possible, that the will that was found was not the will Josiah wrote. You mean, he may have left this money after all? No, that's wishful thinking. And I refuse to get my hopes up again because they'll probably just get dashed again. Listen, I feel bad enough that you drove all the way out here for nothing. Maybe you should just go home. Would you mind if I stayed for a while? No, but I really don't feel like being sociable right now. There's nothing for you to do. Well, dang. Um, personally, I'd like to see if Josiah hit a second will somewhere. So I didn't know this until I was uh, researching for like those facts that I put up before the stream. Uh, but this game was actually based on two separate mysteries um, from books. One book is about a will that was forged. Another book was about missing stolen jewelry. So they kind of combined the two and put them together. So, hmm. 
I'd like to see if Josiah hit a second will somewhere. <laughs> what are you? Some kind of Sam Spade? Well, yeah. just because I've never solved a mystery before doesn't mean I can't. Anyway, there's no harm in trying, right? Who knows? I might turn out to be good at it. Be my guest. All right. Here's my vocabulary sound effect. Boom, 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 boom. So, I'll be back in a little bit. Sam Thanks Spade. Again, Nancy. From our strategy guide book. Was a private detective and protagonist for Samuel DeShiel Hammett's popular mystery articles and books, including the 1930 novel The Maltese Falcon. The movie adaption didn't flicker across movie theater screens until 1941. So, that was a fun fact about Sam Spade. Okay. All I have is one nickel. That's all I have to my name right now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot. I gotta fix the picture. What could have made this picture move? <laughs> Is this your sewing machine? Actually, that belonged to my mom. She and Jane used to be dressmakers. Mom was going to teach me how to use it, but she... She never got the chance. Would it be alright if I used your sewing machine? Go right ahead, but remember, you're on your own. There's no needle. It's probably in the box with the rest of Mom's sewing stuff. Ask Jane if she knows where it is. Oh, uh, you know what? We haven't saved this game in so long. We probably should save it. Um. Uh, we could. We'll say so, so, so time. So time. So time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now let's talk to Jane. So, what did Emily say? Did she tell you about the pictures and the voices? How long has this been going on? For about two weeks, I guess. You know what? I'll bet it's me. I'll bet it finally hit Emily that I'm just not Gloria and I never will be and that running this place is always going to be all up to her. And it was just more than her poor mind could bear. What did the sheriff say when you called him about the stolen jewels? He said since nobody got robbed at gunpoint or anything, coming out here again just didn't seem necessary. Said it sounded to him like the jewelry had just been misplaced. You see, I, well, it only felt fair to tell him about Emily's you know, delicate state of mind. Would you happen to know mm. where the needle for the sewing machine in Emily's room is? I moved all of Gloria's sewing things out of there and put them in a little box. Look, I'm supposed to get the pies we baked before all the hullabaloo this morning ready for the <laughs> delivery man. They gotta be put in is the that shipping a, is that a word container from the just list? so or he casts a kitten. This is how he wants them organized. Now why don't you go out no. on the porch and get those pies ready to go while I look for that sewing box? Mmm, pie Sounds time. Sounds good. No okay. I'm so excited. I love pie. No oh, yum pie. Okay. I need to let's see, I need to get like a snapshot of this, don't I? Okay, let's see. That should work. Yeah. All right, there we go. Let's organize some pies. All right, Sandgate wants two large cherry, one blue pie, and one chocolate pie. We just don't know what size yet, so we'll wait. We'll come back there. Riverville wants one cherry. Uh, looks like it says it wants one... Yeah, one cherry, one small and one large blue. And it wants one small and one large chocolate. Appleton wants one small cherry pie and one large cherry pie. Two small blue ones. And one small and one large chocolate. Yeah, there we go. 
me laughing every time Nancy's like, I guess I could play detective. <laughs> yeah, for real. Clock merges elements from the first four books, I believe. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I was wondering. Because I wasn't sure which stories it merged together. All right, one small and one large for Skydale. Two large blue ones. Which means that this one must go up here since it's the only blue one left. Oh, no, there's another blue one down there. And two large chocolates. Knox View wants two of the same size cherry. So it must want just the small one since there's nothing left. Knox View also wants one large blueberry, which means this one goes up here. Two same size chocolate, but the two large chocolates need to go down here. So that must go here. And then this one goes here. There, that should do it. Yeah, wonderful. Hmm. Oh yeah, we can look at the clock now. Hmm, interesting. So I think that this is an error in the game, because I'm pretty sure you're supposed to see this before you actually get to the shed. But um they don't ever mention this again. It was I think it was supposed to show you which way you were supposed to do the the mirrors. But yeah. I'll bet those are the two brothers that built the inn and Josiah's house. Looks like there might be some kind of tunnel around here. There's something written on the back. Door in parlor window seat. So that's where we're headed, folks. We're headed under the parlor. What? What? You guys have never seen this? Okay, hold on. Let me go back. So this clock, you can only see it once Jane leaves, but it was intended to show you the puzzle for the mirrors in the shed. And so I guess during development, they forgot to take it out because you, it doesn't show you exactly what to do. And uh, yeah, it's incorrectly placed in the timeline of the game. So I guess they just left it in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's so exciting when we get to see things we've never seen before in these games. Make sure show it sharding. Okay, door to the parlor seat. Are you all ready to do the ultimate sleuthing? What in the Hagrid of Harry Potter? Opens the couch. <laughs> Bruh. If I found a secret passageway like this, ooh. I would so explore it. No what hesitation. I'm not the only one who's been down here recently. Hmm. <gasps> Did not know that that was the one that opened up, but that's cool. This must take us up to Emily's room. Jeepers! I'm behind <gasps> one of the walls in Emily's room. I'll bet that's how someone makes that picture move. Hmm. Hmm. I should ask Jane about the photo I found that allowed me to find that staircase that goes behind Emily's room. Yeah. Oh, An that's old right. Piggy bank. Swell, a dollar. This piggy bank looks like it's been here for a long time. That's the money that you were talking about, that? Tori. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about Creepy's Corner too. Okay. I wonder if those tiles are supposed to make a picture. I think it goes... Does it go all the way to the left, or...? Oh, we're about to find out. Let's see. Creepies. Oh, my bad. Should be... Like this. Creepies corner. Yeah. And this makes a moon. Beautiful. All right, now we just gotta figure out the rest of it. Hmm. 
Maybe this one goes here? No, it goes here maybe. Yeah. Trees go there. Is that right? No. That's right. This is part of that pillar. Yeah. Hey, that was good. It didn't take too long. That symbol reminds me of the one on that trivet that used to belong to Josiah. Mm. I love secret passageways and box window seats, so this game is peak passageway. I agree with you. I was just thinking when we when we first started talking to Emily how much I, I've always wanted a window seat somewhere because I love window seats. Yes, I better not leave the lights on. Jeepers, that sounds like Richard oh, Thomas. It's him. This door must open right into his there living room. Go, good kitty. <laughs> He's talking to Yuri. Yeah, but I agree with you, though. This is one of the really good secret passageways. Okay. Well, I don't. Can Guess we? I better not leave the lights on. Can we go up? I can't go in there now. Mr. Topham will see me. Oh, so we'll have to come back another time. Not gonna lie, those spider webs would give me a big pause. Yeah. I don't usually mind spider webs too much, but if I see, like, and it would have to Guess be not a big spider. On. Usually, spiders don't freak me out. Too bad. Or, oh, she's back. Thanks for doing the pies. The more I do it, the worse I seem to get at it. Here's that box. I'm sure that sewing machine needle is in there somewhere. I see it. Remember, when it comes to using it, you're on your own, kiddo. I think I know why Emily has been seeing and hearing strange things. Well, I'm all ears. Tell me. I found a secret passageway that goes from the Yeah, end tell us what you know, Emily's Jane. House. And off of it... I found a staircase that leads to a space behind a wall in Emily's room. That's the staircase that's in this old picture. You mean, the noises that Emily's been hearing, the things she's been seeing, it's because someone's been sneaking around behind the wall in her room? Did you know about the secret passageway? No, and I've never heard Emily say anything about it either. I was able to open the staircase because I saw the picture I just showed you. And I found that picture on the shelf in your podium. You mean it was right there under my nose? Hold the phone! You think <laughs> I'm the one who's been sneaking around? Well, I did find the picture right there. But I've never seen it before in my life. Besides, anyone who's ever been behind this desk could have seen that picture. It's hardly fair to go pointing a finger at me. Maybe Emily will know something about it. She went into town to run some errands. At least that's what I told her to <gasps> we can do. go look underneath her drawer now. Some fresh air. Well, I'll talk to you later. Don't take any wooden nickels. Hmm. Teach me your ways. No, you know, no, that's what I was going to say is like spiders don't usually freak me out or snakes. You know what really gets me? Like, I'm just like, no, I can't. Roaches. No, thank you. That's the one that I can't do. DJ Twin Gamers, hey, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Clock is one of my favorite games. This is such a good game. I forgot how light and happy this one is. Okay, let's read it. Dearest Gloria, if you would do three simple things for me, I would very much appreciate it. First, keep this note for me. Tuck it away in a safe place, and should I ever ask to see it, please allow me to do so. Second, don't mention or show this note to anyone else. Third, don't ask me why. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You are a kind lady who sparkles like good water and makes me think the sky's the limit. I think we should... Let's see, let me get to another... So he says that Glorious... Kind lady, good water, sky's the limit. Got it. Ah, 
I know. I know. They're just... Bleh, 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 bleh. Wait, can we look at anything else or is that all? Oh, I didn't know we could look at this. Dear Gloria, sorry it's taken me so long to answer your letter. I'm still a secretary at the bottling plant and business is booming, so I'm busier than ever. In fact, I'm typing this during my lunch break, so please excuse the mustard stains. <laughs> still love those bologna sandwiches. Of course, I'll take care of Emily if something happens to you. All she has to do is write and I'll come running. But quit worrying about such things. You've got a nice place to live and that sweet little girl to keep you company. You've got it made in the shade. Me? I'm still in the boarding house. It's not the Ritz, but my room is right across the hall from the washroom and most of the gals here are honest and hardworking and fun. But there are a few bad apples, like this gal named Marion Abern. She dropped in the other day to borrow some bobby pins, so I went to the drawer to get some for her. Only when I turned around, she was going through my purse. She said it had fallen over and she was just putting it back, but I know what I saw. Anyway, I sure miss you. I'm investing as much money as I can in the stock market because my boss says it's a surefire way to get rich. So next year, maybe I can take the train out there to see you. Better yet, maybe I'll buy a car. Wouldn't that be the butterfly's boots? Right soon. Your friend forever, Jane. Ah. I see now what... Don't have a problem here, but I was the only person in my biology lab group in the college willing to handle the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. How did you do that, Tori? You're a, you're an rock star all-star for handling that. Susie, how are you, my friend? How are you doing today? Welcome to the stream. So good to see you. All right, let's listen to this baffling story. <laughs> I'll never forget the night it all began. That dark, stormy, fateful night when I decided the time had come to rid the world of the creature. But it would take money to do that, and to get money, I needed to confront my arch enemy, Nick, who had recently become able to transform himself fittingly into a giant warthog. When his forest hideaway came into view, I dismounted and approached the door on foot so I could take him by surprise. Fear that he would hear me prove groundless, for a terrible storm began to rage, washing away the sound of my footsteps. <laughs> so dramatic. <laughs> I peered through the rain-streaked window beside his front door, and could see him sitting in front of the fire. He had returned to human form, but the malicious smile on his face suggested that he was recalling his recent poor sign exploits. Seeing that the door was unlocked. I hurled it open and marched across the room toward him. <laughs> Step away from that bottle of warthog potion, I commanded, and give me the 20 gold coins you stole from my poor servant. I'm not going to give you a thing, say <sighs> a taste of my sword. And with that, he drew his sword in an instant. I had drawn mine, and so commenced the fiercest sword fight the world had ever known! The storm raging outside paled in comparison to our battle. To my surprise, Nick's experiences as a lower life form seemed to have improved his skill as a swordsman. I fainted, I parried, and yet victory eluded me. And soon, I began to feel my strength ebbing from me. I was tiring rapidly, summoning every ounce of what little energy remained in my body. I lunged at him one last desperate time. Ouch! Why? <laughs> you wounded me! I had managed to wound uh... him on his right arm, just above the elbow. Curse you! His words, punctuated as they were by an untimely clap of thunder, 
sent a shiver down my spine. Save your breath, I intoned, and give me those gold coins. Here, take your precious coins. He tossed the bag of coins onto a chair, but as I reached for them, he reached for his bottle of potion, and in a matter of seconds, my night had gone from bad to horrible. Hmm. Oh, that, that, that is such a dramatic record. <laughs> oh, man. Good to see you, too. Liam is so sick. I'm just hanging in there. Oh, but I'm so glad I finally got to catch my new shoes. Oh, no. I, how is he doing? Because um, I think I remember seeing on your story that you said he was sick. So he's been sick for a couple days now, huh? So now we should do this part, yeah? I bet a needle goes here. Oh, my bad, my bad. Well, I hope he gets to feeling better soon. I don't know. Some, I hope nothing's going around or anything. They hiss when you pick them up, but they're just chatting. Oh, Tori, I could not do it. I don't know how you did it. You know who could do a good reenactment of the record? You. Oh, my gosh. I can't even. Oh. Uh, oh, 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 this is so bad. What? Oh, this is so bad. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yep. Just come around just like that. Uh-huh. Wow, this is the worst thing that has ever been sewed in the history. Did it take there. it? Not bad, Mr. That Drew. never Not happens. Bad at all. That was so bad. Actually, it would be hilarious to reenact the scene in a bunch of different styles. <gasps> yeah, it would. Can you imagine doing a bunch of voices for all the lines? All Nancy Drew characters coming together to tell this story? <gasps> we could totally do that. That's a thing. Thank you. Yeah, he got sick while I was streaming Friday night and I had to leave unexpectedly. He woke up coughing and throwing up. Oh, had a cold ever since and he's miserable. Thank you, though. Yeah. And especially, like, when you're a kid, that is, like... Though, and even as an adult, I feel this way, but oh my gosh, when that's the worst sickness, I feel like. Oh, wait, I forgot that puzzle on Senior Detective is so unforgiving. I've never played it on Senior Detective, but I can only imagine. Oh, so this is where we figure okay, so hoof beats. G, thunder, thunder, is O O rain D. Footsteps. 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 Was that it? Yeah. No. Oh, and rain. Yeah. D. Then the door opens. Yeah. F. E. Clashing Swords, LL, and then O, and then W. So good, good, good fellow. That's what we're looking for. Good fellow. Oh, and the dress, yeah. Oh, we're going to have to buy gas. But luckily, we got a dollar from the Secret Passageway. Thank you so much for the cheer story. Uh... It's pretty much the worst, and he pouts when he's sad or sick, and his sad little face just makes me cry, but he's a trooper, no. Yeah, because he's young, right? Well, I sure hope he gets to feeling better. And for your for for his sake, and for your sake, too, because, you know... Welcome to Zippy's! That's a lot. Where Zipless service is Zippily Zapped, and Zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Ah, oh, I'm feeling like I got some cash. I can... Just 50 cents worth, please. I'll do 50 cents worth. That'll be 50 cents. Here you go. Drive zippily. Okay, to the bank we go. Da -da 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 
Such good music. How's the dress coming? All, All done. done. This is beautiful. Thank you. Now let's see if that key you found opens up Josiah's safe deposit box. Oh, this is oh, this is it. That was Josiah's key, all right. But that is not Josiah's will. Mm. It looks like some kind of journal. Would it be okay if I kept this? If it was money or jewelry or something like that, I'd turn it over to Topham. But a journal? Finders keepers, as far as I'm concerned. I'll be at my desk if you need me. I can't remember the contents of this one. Is this where? It's locked, naturally. <laughs> Let's see. Let's put in the code. Good fellow. Uh, yeah. Flute seven point <gasps> oh two five yeah. megahertz. Puck. That's who Josiah played in a Midsummer Night's Dream. Knows me as Puck. Okay. Gave his cue and told him what he was supposed to say in reply. He thought it was a joke, but that's okay. I can trust him. Pyramus. 7.057 megahertz. <laughs> he was in a foul mood, but I told him his cue and gave him his reply. I told him to write it down, and he did because I could hear his pen scratching on the paper. Fisby, 7.050 megahertz. It looks like some kind of record of the people Josiah talked to on his ham radio. I gave her her line. Then he then had her say it over and over till she knew it by heart. She knows the cue line too. Don't have to worry about her. Hmm. Anything else I can do for you? I guess I'll be going. Come back anytime. But how are you? Well, I'm great, Susie. I'm great. I'm excited gearing up for mystery night tomorrow. Excited that we're celebrating mysteries in August. It's been fun. But yeah, all good over here. Okay, let's see. He's turning two October 29th, so yeah, pretty young. Wow, he is really young, huh? The hobos would put a kind man lives here on your house. Oh, well, thank you. You're very kind. I love that Goodfellow gets worked into the game since the character Puck's other name is Robin Goodfellow. <gasps> I didn't think about that, Tori. What a great observation. Josiah is so clever. He definitely is. It, that, I mean, that takes a Hello, lot Mr. Drew. Hi, Mr. to be Calvin. able to piece all of this together. Now what? Do you mind if I look around some more? Be my guest. No, that's not what I wanted to ask. Now what? Could I see that copy of A Midsummer Night's Dream you have there? Why? Well, you said it was Josiah's favorite play. I'd just like to take a look at it. It's a very old copy. I'd rather it not be handled unnecessarily, lest it fall completely apart. I'm sorry, Miss Drew, but request denied. It was nice talking <laughs> to you. Drop by anytime. Okay. Oh, I know. There, there are definitely some plot holes with his uh, thinking here. Very true. But maybe, maybe in favor of Josiah, maybe he gave them some instructions, like if for anything to happen to them, they would leave a clue. No, that wouldn't work, would it? Yeah, that's a good point. That is very true. Let's go see if we can sneak into Josiah's home. Why do I get the feeling someone's following me? Nancy, please. You're gonna make me pee my pants, Nancy. Don't do that. Guess I better not leave the lights on. I don't hear anybody. Now would be a good time for me to sneak inside and have a quick look at that Shakespeare book. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Clear your mind of all thoughts. Okay. Think about nothing. Save Josiah. Uh. Yuri, be quiet. You're <gasps> disturbing us. Oh no. I'm gonna give uh, Yuri his mouse. I forgot. Shh, 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 shh. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. There, there, little kitty. <laughs> I was trying to see if you could actually hear what they were saying. Either one, Mrs. Jackson. Just concentrate. Be 
meeting going on so interesting where's the book is around the corner oh. Josiah must have circled these quotes but why oh okay so these are the ones we need to write down okay so thou speakest aright I am that merry wanderer of the night My bad. That was my phone. Something tells me I better write down all the stuff that's circled here in my journal. Shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. And then this be, if we shadows have offended. Shadows... Think but this and all is mended that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. Hmm. Oh, okay, I have it written down. Just concentrate. What does it mean if I'm starting to get a headache? It means you're doing too much talking and not enough concentrating. Oh, you can hear them. You can do it, Mrs. Declan. Just keep looking down that tube at that one spot. Pretend your thoughts are a hurricane oh. whirling around that one spot, oh. grabbing it, dragging it towards you. <coughs> Mrs. Deckman, please. It's nice, Mr. Coppin. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> uh, I have literally never listened to their conversation before. Okay. What's next? What's next on the agenda here of mystery solving? Um, Guess I better not leave the lights on. My cats are freaking out hearing Yuri cry. <laughs> what were they doing, Mackenzie? Were they like running around? Or were they doing that cat thing? You know how cats like, they like tilt their heads in wonder and they're like, what is this? What's going on? Okay, let's check some more things off the list, shall we? Oh. That's done. I haven't done that yet. Figure out which symbols to press. Okay. Check. That's done. I'm finished with that. Check. That's done. That's done. That's done. Check. Oh my goodness! I'm, wow, we've done so much. Check. I'm finished with that. Check. I'm fi check. That's check. Whoa. Can't check that off. Use the frequencies. Ask Richard Topham if it would be okay. That's done. That's done. I haven't done that yet. Wow. We don't have much to do. I'm so glad we saw our checklist, though, or task list, because I needed seen these to. Symbols before on that big clock in the attic of the carriage house. I need to take a picture of our symbols. Okay. Yeah, there we go. My boy cat started growling and ran to the front door and the other two girl cats ran and hit him in the bed. <laughs> oh no. I thought the cat was there with them. Now I think we should be able to go give the frequencies. At least it doesn't make you put that in there every time. That's That was a nice touch. Okay. Audio warning. This cutscene is loud. I'm about to do it. No. Yeah, 
apologies. Okay, back to good volume. Sweet. So we should be able to put the quartz in here. Um, yeah, we should be able to do the frequencies now, I think. Are they in here? Yeah. Oh, let me write those down too. Let's see, flute. 7.025. And then pyramids. 7.0057. This P. 7.050. Got it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, the sound, the cutscenes are loud. Who should we? I guess we'll, I'll just go in order of what I have. So, seven. Looks like Josiah was a ham radio operator. So, this one should be zero, five. Yeah. Zero, five, zero. Hello? Can anyone hear me? Speak to me. Hello? I'm Thisby, but only Pop calls me that. Who's this? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm afraid I have some bad news Oh, I forgot. We are the ones that tell them that he died. <gasps> oh, dear. They closed the play he was starring in, didn't they? That's why I haven't heard from him. He's too far down in the dumps. Hmm. Oh, I was afraid it was something like that. Actually, you haven't heard from him because he passed away several months ago. Oh, my. That's worse, isn't it? And after all that rigmarole he went through, making sure I knew my line and understood my cue... Your Q? Yes, you see, Puck, or whatever his real name is, or was, Puck wanted to share his <laughs> love of acting with me. So he gave me a line to say, a very curious line, I might add, and told me to repeat it only after I heard my cue, a passage written by Mr. William Shakespeare. So if I cue you with a passage, you'll respond with the line he gave you to say? Immediately. I know it by heart, you see. Here it goes. Okay, so this beat's line was uh shadows. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. <coughs> the authorities are alert for bad water, so do not <laughs> go this way. The authorities are alert bad for bad water. water, so do not go this way. That's what I was to say. Are for Although bad my delivery was much better when Puck was coaching me. Authority. Okay, authorities. Alert. Bad water. Don't go this way. Got it. She really did, didn't she? She just emphasized that one word. Thisby's not your real name, is it? No. It's what Puck called me. My real name is dull as dishwater, just like my life. Mildred. Oh. <sighs> Puck was such a breath of fresh air. His real name was... Uh, uh, I don't want to know. He told me that acting was his life, and that he'd gotten rich and famous <laughs> doing it. No matter who he was to the rest of the world, that's what he was to me, and that's how I want to remember him. And now, as Puck was fond of saying... I bid you adieu. Over and out. Okay, then. So, let's do... Was it flute? Yeah, flute next. Um, five, yeah. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? This is flute, but you sure don't sound like Puck, so explain yourself. Uh, hmm. my name's Nancy Drew. So where's Puck? Well, I'm pretty sure Puck's real name was Josiah Crowley, and I hate to say it, but he passed away earlier this year. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Heck, I never got to give him his sentence. What sentence is that? Well, see, a while back, Puck dictated a sentence to me and told me that if and when he recited a certain passage from Shakespeare, I was to respond with that sentence. Weird fellow, that Puck. If I tell you the passage, will you tell me the sentence? Well, yeah, sure, I guess. Especially seeing as Puck's no longer with us. Shall we there fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. That's it. Here, let me check my logbook for the response. Uh, now I'm supposed to say, leave by road when the owner is in 
because then there will be thieves about. Leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about? Those were Puck's exact words. Well, hope I've been of some help. Over and out. Okay, we only have one more left. And it's Pyramus, which is... Mm, five, seven? Yeah, five, seven. Pyramus, can you hear me? Hello? This is Pyramus. Who are you? My name's Nancy Drew. Does somebody named Puck usually call you on this frequency? Somebody named Puck used to. Apparently he found something better to do. Haven't talked to him in months. Well, that's because he passed away not too long ago. Oh. Well, that's a good excuse, I guess. How'd you know he called me Pyramus? I'm a friend of a friend of his. I found your name and radio frequency in his journal. So why are you talking to me? Did Josiah, I mean Puck, ever ask you to tell him something whenever he read a certain passage from Shakespeare? Whenever he rattled off this Shakespeare quote, I was supposed to rattle off this stupid saying he gave me. How did you know about that? Long story, but if I were to rattle off the quote, there's no reason why you can't tell me the stupid saying, right? Well, come to think of it, he never said the quote had to come from him, so yeah, I guess I could tell you. Thou speakest aright, I am that merry wanderer of the night. How'd you know? <laughs> Long story. What did he tell you to say in response? Wait a minute. I had to write it down. Okay. Here. You're gonna love this. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. I told you it was stupid. <laughs> I really appreciate your help. Just out of curiosity, what kind of car did Puck drive, do you know? I don't think he had a car. And he tried to tell me he was rich. Over and out. Okay. So we should be able Root. to do this part now. Is a character in a Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh yeah, yeah, let me let me pull up our symbols here. So it's leave by the road when the owner is and then there'll be thieves about. Let's see. So which one would be leave by the road? So I see the one that says this owner is in and that there are thieves about, but which one? Unless it means... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Leave by road. Unless it means hit the road. Possibly. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Okay. This B is authorities alert. Bad water don't go this way. Hmm. So authorities alert. Is this one. Bad water. I should say like this we does water. <laughs> water. <laughs> and then don't go this way. <laughs> Uh, don't go this way. Sky's the limit. No, authorities here. Is it... There's no use in going this way. This one. Yeah, one more, one more. Pyramus. A barking dog. Barking dog here. That's this one. Um, hold tongue and... That was keep quiet and then dangerous neighborhood which is this one bottom is bottom what um like gloria what he wrote to gloria yeah from the bottom of my heart that's right because that's what the letter said bottom of my heart so she would be a kind lady lives here good water 
and the sky is the limit. <gasps> that was it! Oh my gosh. Okay, your goal is to reach the end of the path and to land exactly on the last spot on the board. No going over. Each card can only be used once. You do not need to use all of the cards. To take a shortcut, you must be on a spot with a picture on it and use the same picture to take the pathway. Ooh, tricky, tricky. Okay, well, let's try it. We have, well, let's see, one, two, three, four. So we could do four and then go the snow pathway or we could try and do this pathway. It just kind of depends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we would have to combine something to get 15 to get to here. So maybe because we're not gonna use the butterfly one, we'll use this one. And why would we wanna go back? We would use this in the crown. and then use this to go over. Okay. So now it's a matter of, do we want to use diamond, sun, or teardrop? So one, two, three, four, five. That would match up because we won't, won't want to go back and then we would use the diamond, which is one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But that gives us over 17 left over, which is too much left over. Hmm. Yeah, that's too many. Yeah, because see, we have to use these. Yeah. Okay. So different pathway. Although that one seemed pretty right, but maybe not. Let's try the snowflake one. One, two, three, four. Snowflake one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Butterfly. I wish this was a real board game. I know it would be a really fun board game. Tori says this is like candy candy land on steroids. I know. I'm having to do math. Oh man. It's never good for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we could do the six and the three. Take the star pathway or the sun pathway. Oh, but that still doesn't leave me enough. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it doesn't leave me enough. Okay, reset. Hmm. I liked what we had earlier when we did this pathway first. I thought that was good. And then we did five and then the diamond. Hmm. But that doesn't that put me in the same predicament I was in earlier? I feel like we need to keep the crown when we get here so we can go back and waste a couple spaces or something. Wouldn't that make sense? Yeah, it's the same. Okay, well maybe let's try and see if we can keep the crown before we get there. Okay, one, two, three, four. Do do do. Hmm. Or this one. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, we could do seven and three. Take that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Oh, I already used it? Oh, that's right, because I used that. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't get me there, does it? Hmm. This is tricky. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. One, two, three. Wait, let's think about this. One, two, three. Use the four. No, we still have eight over. So what happens if we use eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's so close. Okay, so that one was a little bit closer, I think. That's why I think we need to keep the six. Ah. Ah, so close. So, okay. Let's retry it then. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So maybe we should use... Uh... No, because that won't get us to there, will it? One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Because we could, we, we can't go here because we don't have a five, so I guess we would have to go over here, wouldn't we? And we would have to use 15, but I don't want to, I'm, I'm too scared to use my six. I feel like I need the six, but maybe I don't. Hmm. Okay. Let's just see. There's nothing wrong with just trying it out and seeing. <laughs> Liv, what's up? How are you? Welcome back. Yeah, we're trying to play shoots and ladders right now. And it is craziness. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hmm. Yeah, and so see, I still have left over one, two, three. Mm. Okay, reset. <laughs> well, no worries. No worries, Amy. Thanks for still being here, though. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. I, in the same way, Liv, I haven't played those games either, and I would been really wanting to play them. Wait, I can do that? You can have left over? Oh, I thought you had to use all of them. Right? Don't you have to use all of them? <gasps> if that's the case, then I could have won. <laughs> <gasps> ah, 
You don't have to use every number? Oh my gosh, okay. Oh, I did not know this. Okay, okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we could do, let's see, nine, six, and three, and then seven. One, two. Wait, how did I end up with a, oh man, okay, hold on, wait. Oh, it's because I'm supposed to go this way, huh? Um, How did I do that last time? Nine, six. And then get rid of that one. One, two, three, four, five. And then this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Four. One, two, three, four. But we need the four. So if I use ten to get to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, will that work? <gasps> Y'all, this whole time, I did not know! Oh my gosh, I didn't know. You guys just saved me a billion years worth of continuing <laughs> like just playing this game over and over and over again. <laughs> Uh, take this to Tiny Town and for oodles of fun, use it there to hit a hole in one. A golf ball. No doubt meant to be used Thank on you so much. Thank you. For the cheers. That was such a hard one. Okay. No, not the vampire D. If you can make a custom emoji for Vampire ID, kinds of stream moments, please do. Uh, that would be immersion. Okay, so I just have to buy another card now, huh? Here we go. Does it make you play the whole course again? Oh, it does not. Can you actually miss this? What happens? I don't want to try though, because like what happens if something bad happens? Ugh. Thank you so much, McKenzie. <laughs> oh, did it go? What am I looking at? What happened? Another oh. safe deposit box key? No. Now this is where it really just sleuths up a little bit. We become ultimate sleuth mode. Ah, uh, hey, K kid. Thanks for joining. You've got to go talk to Emily. She's in a bad way. What do you mean? What's happened? Please, go talk to her. She won't listen to me. I'm no help at all. Hmm. Just go back to River Heights, Nancy. Why? What's the matter? I took a nap after I got back from running errands, and when I woke up, this was in my hand. It's one of the necklaces that I thought had been stolen. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how it got there. I must do things and not remember. All this responsibility on top of losing mom. I can't cope with it. I'm having a, what Jane call it, a nervous breakdown. That is so bad. So Jane is basically making her feel like she's going crazy. That's bad. No, you're not. I don't want to talk anymore. Go home. You're just making things worse. Oof. K 
Can I still talk to Jane? Did you talk to her? Do you see what I mean? No wonder I never saw or heard anything. It was all in her mind. I'm not so sure, Miss Willoughby. What's more, I think I've found something that'll solve all her problems. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, no, for real, Sammy. That's what I was going to say. She is a gaslighting uh, Emily. Uh, okay, this we should be able to check oh, everything off at this point, yeah. Check. Check. Boom. Check. I'm finished with that. Can't check that out. <gasps> I don't have gas, do I? I don't think I have gas. Ooh. Okay. Or didn't I just fill up? Oh, I filled up. Oh, good. I listened to everyone's advice in the chat and I filled up beforehand. I'm glad you stopped by. I need to clear the air about something. I lied before. Not just when I said the bank was doing fine when it's really not, but when I said that wasn't my car you saw parked outside the inn today. I parked it there because I didn't want anyone to know that I was at Richard Topham's begging him for money. Mm. This bank is in truly dire financial straits. And if anyone finds out... Mr. Archer, I already knew you were at Richard Topham's today. I saw your name in his calendar. Oh. So what can I do for you? <laughs> I found another safe deposit box key that belonged to Josiah. Impossible. Josiah only had one box, and you've already opened it. But this has to be Josiah's key. It is one of ours. Where did you get it? I won it playing golf at Josiah's with a special ball. I had to ace one of the holes. Why does that sound familiar? I know why. That's what Clara yeah. always called me. Her ace in the hole. It's Clara's. That's this key belongs to Clara Pickford. So, Clara Pickford was really Josiah Crowley in disguise. Apparently, he loved playing tricks like that on people and hiding things right under their noses. <gasps> there it is. The last will and testament of Josiah Crowley. I wonder what this is. Gloria Dowd, now Crandall, and Jane Willoughby, circa 1912. Jane Willoughby? That doesn't look the least bit like Jane oh, Willoughby. Oh, man. No, it certainly doesn't. I better get back to the Lilac Inn and have a talk with her right now. This is just a juicy ending. Move out of the way, would you please? I'm kind of in a hurry. You're not going anywhere until you tell me who you really are. What are you talking about? I just saw a picture of Jane Willoughby. The real Jane Willoughby. It's been swell knowing you, sister. <laughs> Not the put it in I gear. Oh. That was too funny. She sure did. She put that thing in go. And she gassing it, too. She is gassing it. Well... You know, I meant to tell y'all earlier that this town has way too many potholes. Like, our town has so many potholes. And we kind of make jokes about them because they're, like, so bad and so big. Like, just the other day we were driving, and I... This is not a joke. I swear to you, we hit a pothole so big... Oh! Just getting away. We hit a pothole so big it literally changed the radio station. She's heading for the state line. I know. I'll take a shortcut and That is not off. a joke. Did you know potholes could change the radio station? I did. <gasps> Why couldn't you just mind your own business? Busted. I know you'll be home from school in a couple of days, but I couldn't wait to tell you. I just solved a mystery. Ah, this is like I the original Nancy Drew paper. I figured out that Emily Crandall's guardian was really an imposter named Marion, who intercepted the letter Emily wrote to Jane Willoughby after her mom died. She pretended to be Jane not only so she could steal Emily's valuables, but so she could convince Emily that she was incapable of running Lilac Inn and that she should sell it and split the money with her. On top of all that, I found Josiah Crowley's real will. In it, he left Emily so much money that she'll be able to hire all the people she needs to keep the inn going. He left Jim Archer a ton of money, too, which means he won't have to close his bank. 
And from now on, he'll be able to buy his wife a new dress anytime he wants. As for Richard Topham, Josiah left him nothing. Oh. Although Topham still oh. refuses to admit that he forged the first will and insists that he's going to contest the will I found. Dad says it's highly doubtful he'll succeed and that he'd be better off sticking to spoon tricks. Anyway, when you get home, I'll give you all the details over a nice big piece of slightly damaged cherry pie. <laughs> Wait, that was so that good. Part of the story. As always, Nancy. Dun, da, dun, da, dun, da, da. <laughs> hey, you sassy detective. Congratulations on cracking the case. You've been awarded the title of... Puzzle Pro! For solving puzzles at lightning speed. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, trailer time. Great news, I think. See, Frank and Joe Hardy have invited me to help them solve a mystery. Only this mystery takes place on a train. But not just any train. A train that was found abandoned years ago in the middle of nowhere. All of its passengers had simply vanished. Some people say the train is jinxed. Others say it's haunted. I mean, it'll be fun to finally get to work alongside the Hardy boys. But I just hope the trip we're going on doesn't turn out to be, you know, one way. So good. Uh, so good. Hmm. Oh, that guys, that was so stinking good. I haven't played Secret of the Old Clock in so long. Oh, gotta stretch. Oh my goodness, I'm so behind. Not she's gassing it. <laughs> and she really did too. She was getting out of there. Oh man, I love this ending sequence because I always think of Uncle Pump getting so mad trying to catch her and he kept failing. It's actually really, it's so hard when you're like trying to cut curves and stuff and like you're trying to get her. It is so hard. <laughs> Welcome to all of Pennsylvania. The potholes here are so bad. <gasps> no, yeah, they're so bad here too. Like they, it's like bad, bad. Like they, we, we need to fix them. Can we get a she's gas in an emote? Yes, that's what we need. We need it. Congrats, yay. I'm so glad, I'm so glad we got through it, you guys. That was too stinking fun. That you guys are so kind. You guys are literally so, so, so kind. And uh, you guys have like overwhelmed me in the best way today on the stream. <laughs> so thank you. Hey, nice dude, congrats. This was such a fun stream. Oh man, I really do. I do appreciate all the cheers, all the subscriptions, all the gifts. Times a thousand, Tori! A thousand cheers! What? 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 <laughs> Tori, thank you! Oh my word, I don't even know what to say. Woody Blake said, Was that a putt putt game I saw on your desktop? Yes. Yes, you did see that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I told you I was waiting a long time for something like this. Ah, yeah. You guys, you know, you don't have to do that. Thank you. Oh my word. <laughs> this is so fun. Thank you. Thank you. No, between, yes, no. Between the both of you, I just, no words. I am just left speechless. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know why I think you're special, Carter. Just showing the love. Oh, thank you. No, if I stay any longer, I mean, so seriously, if I stay any longer, I really may cry because I, I, I just, I feel it's very undeserving and this, this is very kind and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Oh, got a little caught up there. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, giveaway is still going on tomorrow for Mystery Night. And I think you want to be there for it. At the, at the very beginning, for something and then at the end for the giveaway. Yes, I think you I think you I think you'll want to be there for it. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. 
<laughs> Another hype train. And you gifted four subs, Liv. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. Nah, I better get off because like I, I really should get off soon. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh my word. But yes, no, um, Moody Blake, yes, the Putt Putt series is coming for a nostalgic Monday sometime soon on YouTube. Oh no. <laughs> you gifted your husband a sub, he's gonna know. Hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe that was just your freebie, freebie subscription. Because don't they give out like monthly freebie subscriptions? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Thank you guys so, so much for today. I appreciate it. You guys are just the best to chat with all the time. Um, and ah, ah, no words. You guys are the best. But anyways, I will see you tomorrow for mystery night. Very fun things coming. So excited. But you guys have a great rest of your day. And I wish that I could properly express my gratitude for all of the all of the all of the things today so i know i gotta get on that i gotta get on that ah <laughs> uh, thank you moody blake thanks so much for the subscription thank you thank you moody blake i really appreciate that oh you guys are so kind okay you guys i will see you hopefully tomorrow and i really appreciate it bye you guys